Okay, so I am going to call to, uh, uh, to order the Town of Andover Board of Selectmen regular meeting for Monday, June 13th at uh, 7.02. And we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you very much. And we'll move right on to uh, public speak. So um, let's start with Kathy and Mike Plazzi. And we're oh. good. We're, yeah, we're fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, Anne Cremay. I'm fine. Just here watching. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Um, I have a, a, a code, a J724483. Public speak, would you like to join us? Yeah, yes, I would, thank you. Sure, uh, your name? My name is John Kentris. Your address? Uh, 41 Burnap Brook Road. There you go, thank you. And I've got something to bring up, um, whatever you want me to do. Yeah, you're, you're on, public speak. Um, just moved to the area last year, retiring, getting close to the grandkids. But I stopped down to Town Hall today. Uh, I'm an avid archery hunter to see, I live right across basically from the transfer station at the back side of it to see what possibly I could do to get permission to hunt that land. And what I was told was um, this committee had it on their board basically to review, but I don't think it ever came to a conclusion if they were going to let individuals hunt on town property or not. So what I'm looking for is, you know, for myself to do archery hunting, but uh, whatever that means, if that's got to go through a, a vote or as an individual, whatever is needed, I wanted to try to see what I could do to, to get permission to, to hunt at least that piece of property myself. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Catherine, with all the yes. Hello, hi. Um, I just Celtics. wanted to, pardon? Go Celtics. Go Celtics, yeah. I wish we had Steph Curry. Um, so my, I would like to speak a little bit today about the 175th anniversary coming up next year. And we could really use an help from the Board of Selectmen, for the town manager, from town leaders, because we're not really getting enough of a response. Um, I sent, Eric was good enough to forward to you guys the logo. We developed a logo. We developed a brochure to tell people what's happening. We have been posting on our Facebook, um, the Andover Support Network on the website. Amanda's been doing it for us. Um, we set up a, a direct link for donations. And we have maybe 13 donations and 10 of those came from actual members of the committee. So uh, we're we're not gonna be able to do too much if we don't have sponsors and if we don't have um, donations. So we're hoping to maybe get out to businesses ourselves and at least ask for sponsorship because if we're having a major festival here, we're gonna be doing a um, tree planting this year and next year is going to be a, um, a commemoration on the actual incorporation day and then a big festival at the school. And we need those items, those inflatable items that we want sponsored because they're, it's gonna be like $9,000 and we don't have that. So any help that we can get from the, the board or town leaders, we really, we really need your help because the, the donations aren't coming in as the, like we thought they would. All right, well, we'll take that. Um, Diane Choquette. I'm all set, thanks. All right, Carol Lee. Okay. I'm all oh. set, sorry. All right, Leanne Hutchinson. Hi, yes, um, I had a comment about the Public Works Department. Um, with the roadside mowing and the budget having gone through two, two um, voting cycles this season, I'm not sure exactly where it ended up as far as personnel there, but um, in the past, the town has hired someone just to mow the roadsides in the summer, you know, make several passes, et cetera. 
So I'm hoping that if the public works is a more short staff than was originally proposed, that that's gonna be an option for accomplishing at this summer. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Let's put that out there. All right, we have a cell phone number, 860-20, uh, yes, 208-2345. That's me, Jeff. Oh, hi, Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, You're I'm here. All right, we have another uh, cell phone number, 860-707-5579. That's me, it's Marina. Hi, Marina. Okay. Um, Jed Larson, you're up top. Would you like to say anything in public speak? No, nope, I'm all set for now, thanks. Okay, and I'm assuming Valerie will wait for you um and jay will will get you on our public works section okay so item three is additions and deletions to the agenda the other members have uh, additions and deletions they'd like to make to the agenda anyone no okay then we'll jeff, continue if, jeff if there aren't any additions or deletions I would just like to ask that we move item 9B, 9C, 9D, 9G, and 9H in front of item 5, just so that while we have staff here, we can address all the things that relate to staff. Okay, so um, which items, Eric? And I'll gladly move them again, starting uh, with 9, 9 what? 9B, 9B, 9C. Yeah. 9D, yeah. 9G, and 9H. Okay. What is 9G and H? I don't have that. Um, I think the question's coming about because we got three different board packets. There's the agenda that's on the website. There's the agenda that's in the, pack, the first packet. So are we working off the first packet agenda or the website agenda. Oh, I see. Packet one dash, yeah, packet one dash ten. That looks like that's an updated agenda. Yeah, and unfortunately, the website agenda did not get updated separately. So, sorry, that's my fault. I would gather you had enough stuff in the packet to keep you busy. So. Yeah, it was only like 200 and some odd pages. Only? Yeah. Okay. So does any, do any of the other members have a problem if we move a 9B, C, D, E, G, and H above item five? Anybody? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right, so we're going to move on to item four, boards and commission presentations, uh, recommendations from the Charter Revision Commission. Who is speaking on behalf of the Charter Revision Commission? Okay, so that would be me. Um, I did submit the draft report for the Charter Revision Commission. I believe that was part of your packet. It was. Go ahead. Okay, and just wondering if there are any questions on that. Do any of the other members of the Board of Selectmen have issues with the draft report that was prepared for us and submitted to us on the 8th of June? It starts at page four in packet one. That's the Ballot questions, yeah. So the draft, the draft was starts on five. So it's all the same thing. So does anybody have a problem with what the, the charter revision commission is recommending? Nope. Uh, uh, Jeff? Yes, uh, Dennis? Yeah. yeah, if I may, um a little bit on the legal end of this. Um the draft report is something that was required by a vote of the um Board of Selectmen uh, several weeks ago. It was due, I believe, on the 11th of uh, July or maybe the 12th. I'm not sure. 
and it is a it is a it is a legal document, and it is something that starts the process for the uh, board of selectmen. The board of selectmen now needs to have a public hearing. You need to have one public hearing on the on the on the draft report. And by the way, I I sent you all members of the board of selectmen, Carol Lee as well, and and also uh, Eric a copy of the uh, a revision of that report because the numer numeration of it was. Uh, Messed up, and I'll, I'll take uh, responsibility for that because I did prepare the final report based on uh, the, what happened with the uh, Charter Revision Commission. I attended their last meeting, and they authorized me to do that, but I somehow messed up the numbers, and I sent you a revi revised set of draft reports with uh, the numbers as they should be. There's four items, not three, and um, the words are all the same. It's all the same. Uh, uh, items and proposals of the uh, Charter Revision Commission. So you really need to have a public hearing. My recommendation would be to, if you can, to do that within uh, a couple of weeks. Because if you do that within a couple of weeks and and you like what's in the draft report and you don't want to change it, after 15 days it becomes final. And then we can move it on to the, um, all you would have to do then is approve the ballot questions. We submitted ballot questions to you based on my discussions with the commission and um, those questions uh, you would you would act upon at your next meeting on July, I believe it's July 12th. And then we could move this whole thing onto the um, Secretary of State's office and get it onto the ballot for the November election, which is what the goal is. So, uh, that's really the way the process has to work from here. Board of Selectmen uh, is not being asked to act on this tonight. I think we're just introducing you to it. And uh, you need to have a public hearing. And within 15 days, that, if the 15 days go by after the public hearing, and there's been no objection at all from the uh, Board of Selectmen, then the uh, report becomes uh, final. It becomes, owned, it becomes owned by the Board of Selectmen as well as the final report and then all you need to do is approve uh, ballot questions we've given you a, a draft a set of draft ballot questions that totally reflect the draft report uh items if there's any questions i'll be glad yeah. to answer so dennis it, would it be all right to set the public hearing for our next board of selectmen meeting in the time that would be okay so Scott, but but you you would have to slow it would slow down the process to the point where if you have the public hearing, then um, all right. So then we need to set it for a sooner date. What date I, would be available? I would do would that some date that's more than fifteen days prior to your next meeting on the twelfth. That way, if 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 you do nothing at all in the interim. Uh, that report would become final. So, so Jeff, would you be all right with having a special meeting? And another question: uh, Can we have this a Zoom meeting also? Is I don't see right? why not. Uh, yeah. Under the latest okay. uh, version of the, uh, of the rules set forth by the legislature just recently, based on the uh, prior uh, executive orders of Governor Lamont. Would anybody have a problem that. with a meeting of the 21st of June? I'm assuming at the meeting. Meeting, I'm assuming that the, who's voting at this meeting? Is the community voting at this meeting? No. Um, it's only it's, a public hearing. It's just, just a public just hearing, board, Jeff. Board of okay. Selectmen to receive input from the public. That's all. Um, then we can do a, a special meeting, Scott. I have no problem with that. Just for a public hearing, Jeff. Yeah. I know. Anybody else have a problem with, with a special meeting later in June? No. Nope, at the good. 21st. We can have it the 21st. Carol can be there. Uh, I don't believe I'm back in town yet. When are you back, Jeff? Can we do it the 27th? 
is that 15, 15 days? Yeah, before our next meeting. Our next meeting is the uh, July 12th. Yeah, that would be 15 days. The only thing on the calendar is the, the RTC. So, well, we want to make a motion. Let's make a motion. So, For the 27th? Yeah. All right. Uh, I will motion to set a public hearing date of June 27th for the charter revision public hearing. 7 p.m., I assume. And via yeah. Zoom? Via Zoom. 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. Jeff Murray will second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we are five nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any other issues related to the Charter Revision Commission recommendations? Well, if, if I may, uh, Jeff, uh, you know, it would be it would be good, and I, I don't I'm not trying to influence the the board in any way. That's not my job. But if you do have an issue with anything that's in the draft report, uh, the next step would be for you to have a meeting with the Charter Revision Commission and try to uh, resolve your differences. If that doesn't happen, then um, that's going to take time, and 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 then you you, know, you might run into a problem in terms of uh, getting it onto the ballot. So, you know, this is a this is not a comprehensive uh, change. It's only a few items, and um, you know, it's 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 important, I think, to get it on the ballot for the November election, because if you don't get it on there, then uh, you'd probably, you'd, you'd probably, let's see, could you get it on? I don't know. You, I don't know if you could get it on to the next uh, general election, uh, November 23. Well, well, so, have you, so have, you have, have, excuse me for a second. Has the Board of Selectmen read the draft already? Yes. Everyone's read it. No one has any problems with what Dennis has drafted. Well, it's not what Dennis drafted. It's what right. So it's good. Board. It's what the board. Right. Well, I think I think we need to get. My question to Dennis is: If after getting public input, we decide to make a change, do we then have another public hearing before moving it on? You can, but you're not required. You, uh, you're only required to have one. The Charter Revision Commission was required by law to have two. Uh, one public hearing would be all you'd have to have, and then if there's any differences uh, between you and the board, of, you on the board of selectmen and the Charter Revision Commission, you're required to meet and to try to resolve your differences. And um, if not, the process goes on, and there are all kinds of different steps that have to be taken, which which take time. And uh, you know, um, but if we it, but if we want a change. And the board right. and the Charter Revision Commission agrees to it. We do not have to have another hearing. We can then move forward from there. Correct. And Jeff, the turn in and the turn in date is September something or other, right? Uh, it's in early September. For uh, Carol would know better than I would, but I, I've, I've experienced it many times. But I don't know the exact date. I know it's in early September. It has to be as a yeah. office okay. of uh, Secretary right. of State. Yeah, I'm 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 fine. I think we should set the date for the 27th and just move on from there. I mean, do do we have time to go over go over it tonight? I uh, given the amount of stuff that is on our thing, I don't Probably think it's not. appropriate. We're going to have a meeting on the 27th. Let's wait for public feedback and go from there. My that's my personal take. I I, I think we've all read it plenty of times. Yeah, I I agree that we can uh, have our meeting and, and get the public input. And then if we'd like to make, uh, we have any issues, then we'll discuss those five issues at the special meeting, four issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, if there's no objection, let's move on to 4B, planning and zoning, the current demographics and affordable housing, opting out of public act 2129, accessory dwelling units. Jeff, can I just back up one second? Sure, go ahead. Um, for the sake of expediency, should we schedule a meeting back to back with the Charter Revision Commission just in case. And then if we don't need it, we're all set. Carol, are you okay with that? 
Carol? Yes, I'm fine with that. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'd, I'd like to make a motion quickly then to schedule, schedule a meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the Charter Revision Commission immediately after the Board of Selectmen meeting for the Charter Revision presentation. I'll second that. Okay. All those uh, in favor? What? Aye. 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 Okay. So that passed five nothing. There were no objections. Thank you. Yep. Sorry, Jed. Uh, Jed, I'm assuming that you're going to be giving the presentation on this item. I give it my best shot. I sometimes have a little trouble getting the uh, technology to keep up with me. But uh, uh, before Jed get, before Jed gets started, though, I want to let you know that Jed was a is a retired Navy uh, serviceman, and he still fits into his jacket that he had when he was in the service. His windbreaker. I just want to let everybody on this this meeting know that. All right. Okay, Jed, you're up. We're very proud of you, Jed. Yes. Great. Great. Thank you for yeah. all you did. And he was in the submarine. Exactly. Group. He was the commander of the ship. He was a Jed, you didn't tell me that. You didn't ask. Oh, wow. The commander of the ship. Of the submarine. Exactly. That was, that was 30 years ago. Jed, just, just so I know, what was the name of the submarine? The USS Pasadena. There you go. All right. There you go. A little bit of information about a resident of our own town, but he still fits into his windbreak. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Jed. I'm sorry. Well, that uh, the public act that you mentioned, 21 29, came out uh, you know, last year, and it required each of the towns to come up with an affordable housing plan. And we, uh, you know, we solicited the help of Bill Warner, the consultant, and he helped us put together what I thought was a, a very good plan. The due date for that was the 1st of June, and we submitted it uh, last month. So uh, we were able to. Uh, Meet that due date and the uh, greatest of military traditions there. The, uh, but there were a couple of things that surprised me uh, as we were working through that. And, uh, and one of those was I was surprised at the town demographics of our population. And so as we, we started out with the affordable housing plan, I started thinking this was not something we really needed because I thought Andover was a fairly affordable place to live. To, uh, you know, as we uh, worked on it, I started thinking that this was a, a really good thing for the town to do um, because we've got a lot of people that, that uh, you know, are, are struggling with affordable housing these days, where it could be, you know, workplace, work, uh, workforce housing, because a lot of the workers, uh, you know, fit the, the category that meets that, or the seniors that we have. Um, so I was going to talk to you tonight about one of the things in the plan is for us to opt out of the accessory dwelling unit regulations that, that the state put on. And, and while I was here, I just thought I'd run through the demographics part of that as well. The plan is on the website. Um, I think it's a, a very easy read. So if you haven't read it yet, I'd encourage everybody to, uh, to do so, as well as the uh, presentation that I gave uh, to the town one beautiful Saturday morning where our attendance was uh, all that I was hoping for. But uh, Eric, if you'd uh, let me share my screen, I'll see if I can get... Uh... Uh, you should be able to share now. Okay. Yeah. And just for the record, you know, at, with Jed's leadership, Andover was one of 40 out of 169 towns that actually submitted their plan in time for the state deadline. Thank you, Jed. Yep. So anyhow, is the population increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? And, and here, I think this was, uh, this was from you know, the plan that we developed. It showed uh, back through 2010, you know, a rapidly increasing population in Andover. In fact, uh, we probably uh, you know, modified some of our zoning regulations to uh, you know, slow down some of that growth, if you will, to certainly not make it any easier. But then uh, you know, back uh, from the last, uh, you know, we do a plan of conservation and development. The last one was done in 2015. Next one's gonna be due in 2025. So you know, on the Planning and Zoning Commission, we're getting ready to start working on our next one here. But this is the data that we had from the last 
POCD. And it showed the population slowing, but still increasing, you know, 2015, 3354 to about uh, 3400 in 2025. So we were still going up, but not nearly as fast as we were back uh, prior to 2010. I think we all, all know that Andover is getting older. Um, and this shows the, uh, the median age in Andover and it's projected to be over 50 by 2025, which is coming up soon. And uh, Andover is getting older faster than the state in general. Um, not necessarily good, bad, but that's, that's what uh, you know, we in Andover, we have a, uh, a large senior population and it's, uh, it's continuing to grow. This is, uh, this is the slide in our affordable housing plan that uh, really got my attention. And it, uh, it showed that between 10, 2010 and 2020, Andover's population declined by four and a half percent. And it shows a steadily decreasing population over the last 10 years. And I said, well, that's probably not good for our tax base, you know, and, uh, and all that stuff. And, and there might be um, a, lot, uh, a lot of reasons on that. Uh, you know, uh, the families are getting smaller. As we're getting older, we've got a lot of empty nesters. Um, but a decreasing, declining population, I don't think uh, is healthy for us. And then we went, you know, and I looked uh, at uh, a website called the Connecticut Data Center. And they're, they're the uh, data, they're the group that the state uses to uh, analyze all the census data and all that stuff. And it makes a projection um, like they did for our last planet conservation, but it shows that our population will continue to decline for the foreseeable future. And that's, that's when I said to myself, uh, you know, we, we need to tackle this affordable housing thing. There's, there's people that, uh, you know, they just can't afford to live in Andover anymore for, uh, for a lot of different reasons. And we don't have the facilities here. And we've known that for a long time, long-term study group, uh, you know, in, in the last plan of conservation development highlighted the fact that uh, we needed affordable housing. But if people keep moving away from Andover because they can't afford to live here, I don't think that's, uh, that's a very good thing for us. So I wanted to show you this. Maybe everybody was aware of that, but it, it caught me by surprise. I assumed we were slowly increasing and had a healthy population there. And this is what made me want to tackle the uh, affordable housing. Um, and since we, we finished the plan, you know, inflation's going up, interest rates are going up. Uh, um, the need for affordable housing in town uh, only continues to go up. So hopefully that will, will whet your uh, appetite on, on that. And uh, if there's no questions on what the population trends are telling us, it, and it could be that uh, you know, it doesn't come to pass. Uh, the pandemic and, and the shifting to uh, virtual working may, uh, may result in, in Andover's population turning around and going back up. But right this minute, the state of Connecticut population is increasing, Andover is going down, and uh, we ought to see what we can do to, uh, to keep our town healthy. So that's my, my uh, pitch on the population stuff. Any questions on that? No, I think you're good on the demographics end, Jim. Okay, and so now I'm going to try and go out of this one and see if I can get so the the thing that uh, you know you'll be seeing soon is one of the actions that comes out uh, of the public act 2129 is they had some regulations for accessory dwelling units and part of our plan uh, that we'll talk about here in a minute is the Planning and Zoning Commission, as well as uh, you know, in the plan, recommends opting out of those regulations.
So uh, why do we want to opt out? You know, the, the public act requires each town, and, and I'm just going to read the underlying portion here, provided at least one accessory apartment shall be allowed as of right on each lot that contains a single family dwelling. And the thing that makes that tough for Andover is if all our lots were, you know, one or two acres or bigger, you could put an accessory dwelling unit on there and no big deal. But around Andover Lake in the Lake District, you know, we've got some, some very small lots. Uh, and if we were to say that as of right, each property owner had, had uh, you know, the right to build an accessory unit on there, I think that would be detrimental to the health of Andover Lake. And we're all working to kind of keep that lake healthy. So, you know, our current accessory dwelling unit regulations, and uh, I don't know if every town's got them already, if that's why they, they don't, and that's why it was put into that public act. Um, but we've got, uh, you know, regulations in effect today that uh, address accessory dwelling units. And, uh, and for the Lake Rig District, you know, it talks about if you've got a lot greater than three acres in size, you can put in an accessory dwelling unit. We already talked about Andover having several small lots and that not uh, conducive to the water quality there. So anyhow, based on that, you know, our plan was to uh, opt out of that, which is written into the public act. This was the only piece in there that uh, we had the opportunity to opt out of. And, and the process goes, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission by a two thirds vote votes to initiate the opt out process. And I'm hoping to do that at our planning and zoning meeting next week. Um, after that's done, we're required to hold a public hearing on, uh, on the opting out of it to get uh, input from the town. And if the commission decides to opt out within uh, you know, the statutory deadlines, uh, which is 65 days after the close of hearing, we need to state on the record the reasons for the decision that takes a two thirds vote to approve. We've got to publish our notice of decision like we always do. Um, and then we get to uh, the Board of Selectmen. So once, once we have done that, we bring it to the Board of Selectmen and it needs to be ratified by a two thirds vote of the town's legislative body or its Board of Selectmen if the town meeting is a legislative body. And I'm under the impression that the, uh, the town meeting is the legislative body for our town. So we should be able to uh, ratify that by a two thirds vote of the Board of Selectmen. But I didn't want to come to the Board of Selectmen with this being a done deal and, and having it be the first that you heard about it. And so that's why I wanted to come to you here tonight. If we don't do that, all the requirements of the Public Act go into effect, regardless of what our regulations say. So at that point, our regulations are null and void the state regulations are there and they allow anybody that wants to in town to build at least one accessory unit on their property. And then, uh, you know, there were some good ideas in that public act. Uh, we might want to change our, our uh, accessory dwelling unit regulations at some point in the future. But at this point, I just wanted to make sure that we got uh, the opt-out process complete before the end of the year so that we had the opportunity to take what we wanted from the state's recommendations and, and not be forced to uh, allow accessory units, accessory apartments on our small lots. So that's that. I just wanted to give you a heads up that when you see it, uh, it'll be close to a done deal, but uh, I wanted you to know what was coming your way later this year. Yeah, can, I ask a, can I ask a couple questions for clarification? Yep, go ahead. Um, so the first question is, um, we currently have accessory dwelling allowed under certain guidelines. Would this right negate the guidelines that we currently have in place? I mean, we currently have, a, I think, a limitation of a, you know, has to be under a thousand square feet, you know. Um, and my, my, my secondary to that is, would, wouldn't our inland wetlands um, protect the water quality because I would gather that even with an accessory apartment, although they have a right to have it, there would also be a requirement that the septic meet a certain guideline in order to have additional 
uh, people living in the house. A am I wrong in that? Uh, you are not in incorrect on that. Uh, but again, when we, we created the regulations that we did, and if we, we had it to do over again, I'm sure we would not allow the small lot sizes that we have. So by increasing the septic loading on the lake, um, I don't think that's certainly not in keeping with, uh, with trying to, to maintain the health of the lake as best that we can, recognizing that the health of the lake uh, you know, is probably uh, on a degrading trend, not, not an improving one right this minute. So, so that was the second part. The first question you know, had to do with the size of the uh, dwelling units. And, and right now, um, our regulations limit in an accessory dwelling unit to 800 square feet. Uh, the state uh, recommendation is for a thousand. I might consider, you know, a thousand, but uh, that's something for us to look at later on. The other, the other thing to get into here is, uh, you know, going back to uh, the affordable housing plan. Um, if if we went up to, you know, the first slide down here at the end it said no such accessory apartment shall be required to be an affordable accessory apartment. Why we can't require it, you know, there might be something that we can do to encourage somebody to have that be affordable housing and the requirement on the property owner's part would it would it would have to be deed restricted for 10 years. To be uh, affordable housing on, on a house out in town, you know, it's deed restricted for 40 years. So this is a lot smaller than that. Uh, you know, a lot of people build the accessory apartments for a relative uh, Hopefully we can entice people to, uh, to specify that and help out getting our numbers of affordable housing up to, uh, to better than they are today. So did I um, answer your questions, Adrian? Yes, but I, I, it gives me a, a little bit of concern in the sense that you're suggesting then that our current inland wetlands and, and, and you know, septic regulations are not protecting the lake. So someone could put an accessory apartment and it would put too much you're saying it would put too much septic load on the lake. Isn't the whole point of having a septic to limit, you know, to limit, you know, accessory damage? I don't know that uh, somebody could get the, you know, the Board of Health to approve a septic system on a, I think we have some, maybe as small as a one eight acre lot around it. Right. If, if uh, it would probably protect us there. Would we want a, uh, an accessory apartment with the added septic on a half acre lot or a one acre lot? Um, I don't think we did. I don't think we do. We're trying hard to put in requirements to help us uh, keep the lake as clean as we can. And uh, while I'm not a civil engineer, um, I do think that uh, you know, a lot of the septics are contributing to putting in uh, nutrients into the lake and in uh, hurting that. So while I, I think that public health would have to sign off on it, uh, I don't know that that protects us as well as we would like it to. Um, just so I understand what you're saying, I, I, I don't really have a problem with opting out, but how would anyone get a, like even my lot, how would you get an accessory building on my lot and be, be able to put in a leach field that was 75 feet off a well and outside of the distance that's required for the lake or any of those basement apartment Jeff it could be so, you're, you, you could renovate your basement and make a basement apartment that would consider be considered an accessory dwelling unit and both the accessory dwelling and the main house can use a common septic system if it's uh, large enough to support it and therein lies my question: If you, if your house was built with a, for instance, a five, a five bedroom septic, right, and you have four, you put one bedroom downstairs. I don't see. Uh, my 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 question is: If if we're really concerned that our septic regulations are not protecting us, then we need to address that, not just, you know, not make it hard, not necessarily make it harder, but let's actually make the regulations reflect what we're trying to do, you know. That, that is one of the areas where I feel, you know, and again, not my area of expertise, but I did spend uh, 
a significant amount of time talking to uh, you know Thad King, our town sanitarian, when we were trying to draft the uh, the lake regulations for nutrient runoff. Mm-hmm. And you know, Connecticut doesn't allow him to provide the enforcement that he would like to. When okay. he he talks to me up in in Massachusetts, if you sell your house, a requirement for the incoming person when he's purchasing that house is the septic has to be up to code. Thad can only require an improvement in the septic if it's essentially failing. Okay. Otherwise, it's a paperwork review, and I'm not. And again, I don't think that's what we want to uh, to protect the lake. So that's the missing piece. Thank you. Um, well, one other question, and Jed, just because I didn't sit there and see it, like, where does where does Andover rank in affordable housing? Like, what is our ranking? How far below the requirements are we? Well, so every town is required to have ten percent of its housing affordable. So we've got uh, uh, eleven hundred <laughs> units. We should have maybe 110 affordable housing units. We've currently got about 50. So you know, the again, requirement's 10%, we're 5%. And we are consistent with a lot of other towns. A lot of other rural towns here are at about the, the same 4 or 5%. And, and that's why when you read in the paper, you, you, there's commentary that while towns are providing plans, there might not be a lot of teeth in the plans that actually require anything to get done. And, and I would like to think that based on you know the people that we would like to have living in Andover, which are the seniors and the workforce how, workforce people, we would like to build more more affordable housing to uh, to accommodate them. But isn't that going to require a larger conversation about changing our regulations. I mean, one of the biggest problems I see in our zoning regulations is we don't allow high density housing. Multifamily housing almost doesn't exist in Andover. That is true. There's a couple of things in there and, and those things are all addressed in the plan. There's a, there's an awful lot of work for the planning and zoning commission to do. You know, the, uh, the one action that we would like the board of selectmen to do is to commission a the affordable housing committee that kind of drives the bus on on creating affordable housing. There's a lot of different ways that we can create affordable housing, and uh, and we need somebody uh, out there champion, making it being the champion for that that effort. So if I got the demographics, our population is dropping, and I'm assuming the state of Connecticut population is dropping. The state of Connecticut's actually increasing. You know, they they have increased, uh, you know, in 2020, they increased 1% from the year before, where you know, Andover's decreased a little bit. Okay. Yeah, but that's, so, primary, that's not, but that's not birth rate, that's immigration. Okay. Say again? That's not birth rate increase, that's immigration increase. Uh, it could be, but it's people, yeah. you know, coming yeah. into the state, births and immigrants, okay. primarily driven by Im- immigrants into the state, which so, is a reversal from a few years ago. I think, you know, we we saw a lot of people leaving. But maybe we have reversed. Well, listen, I don't necessarily believe what Adrian just said anyway, because we're in the middle of COVID if the rates are from 2020. So everybody moved out of the city to get to, to a rural community like Connecticut was. So whatever. Let's not get into that level of the discussion. The issue is you're saying we're 5% low on potentially what is required as affordable housing. And we are, we are dealing with a decrease in our population. So, I mean, we're not dealing with a decrease in the amount of housing stock or the used housing stock. We're, we're dealing with a birth rate decrease because all of our houses are there are there eric and you would know are there a significant number of our houses that are unoccupied because i don't see them no there are not the 
the occupation rate stays about the same. The big thing that is affecting us is as the population ages, the percentage of households with kids continues is decreasing. All right. I would disagree with that because if you look at our school population on, you know, we're, we're actually slowly increasing. We, we actually may go back over 200 next year. When we're at one, you know, if you go back a couple of years, we were, we were down into the 180s. Correct. And, nope. and we, we, we wrote out a 2008 or a 2000 and, and a 9-11 issue, a 2008 issue. We wrote out a lot of issues that, that caused slowing of the birth rates uh, with young, young people well, not even getting married. And, so and, if, and if anything, COVID is driving families to more rural communities like ours because in general, they were more, more friendly during COVID okay. situations. So. So, so your real issue, Jed, is to get uh, potentially 50 units of affordable housing or to get to a 10% number the state's requiring. It's not, it's not um, a hard and fast requirement. Are we going to be forced to do it? That's the next question. Well, so if you don't have 10% affordable housing, what, what can happen you know, is there's a uh, general statute that says that if you don't have 10%, a developer can come in and he can put up whatever housing he wants, irregardless of your zoning regulations, as long as it meets uh, the public health requirements, like Adrian was talking about before. And so, you know, one of the problems is that we don't have a lot of big parcels for somebody to come in and do that. And, and they wouldn't be necessarily, uh, nobody's gonna come in and make an affordable housing development unless they can make a profit, you know? And so those aren't the most profitable things. So there's gotta be, uh, you know, something that brings a developer in to work on one of the big pieces of property that we got. Two of the things that, that came out of the plan that, that, that I thought were as exciting as anything uh, that I heard in there was uh, you know, to increase the number of units over in our currently existing senior housing over by the ball fields. There's room for more, more over there. And then uh, you know, our plan of conservation and development uh, talked about putting in some, some senior housing behind uh, what will turn out to be the new uh, senior slash community center you know, by the town hall and the school. And, and I think we could make uh, either of those attractive enough that we could get somebody in to, uh, to uh, come work with us on that. But we need to have somebody who's out there who, who knows how to work with getting the developers in, enticing them and uh, bringing them to town. Um, yeah, yeah, because to your point, Jed, they're, they're allowed to ignore, as you said, as long as they meet the health requirements, which means they could go into a smaller parcel and do a higher density and ignore our zoning regulations as long as they could get a septic field approved. That's correct. So you, they wouldn't need a big parcel. So everyone that thinks that that's protecting us, it's not. So And we also, in our regulations, have two, uh, two uh, chapters in there. One is for I'm going to call it senior housing. I think it's planned development for older citizens or something. And then there's an incentive housing thing. And there are two, two chapters that allow us to do a higher density on bigger pieces of property, like uh, what the town owns uh, behind uh, the, uh, the town hall and that sort of thing. All right, so in, in our, the end goal of our, our plan was not to create 50. We thought that was an unreasonable goal right this minute. We came up with a goal of let's, let's get 10 new affordable housing units over the next 10 years. So if we could add one a year, we think uh, we'd be doing good. And we can do that, uh, but, but there's some, you know, to help out the seniors or those guys just starting out uh, in life that we would like to have stay in Andover, um, we need to have something that they can afford to live in or they're gonna move other places. Okay. So just so we're all clear, what you need from us, Jed, is you're going to move forward with the meeting schedule that you had. 
And yes. then once you get that approved, we as a board of selectmen need to approve it as well. And that's approving the opt out of these accessory dwelling units provided by the state. Okay. Sounds like a plan. The affordable housing plan is approved, submitted to the state, and for right or wrong, good or bad, that's a done deal. Okay. Thank is you, John. And, and then we're that? also going to have to endorse a building committee, an affordable housing building committee. Well, let's uh, let's put that on our agenda for future meetings, Scott, and we'll deal with it at that point in time. And, and certainly, I've taken up more time than I'd hoped to tonight. Uh, if there's uh, anything I can come back to you on, you know, happy to do that. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk to you about it a little bit. Right. Thanks, Jed. Yeah, thank you, thank you thank very you, much. And your your board. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's move on to, uh, we're gonna move to the items that Eric requested that we move. So we're gonna go to 9B, uh, demolition estimates for the old firehouse. Okay, I'm gonna let uh, Jay Tuttle drive this one. Um, Jeff Murray asked that this be on the agenda and this is a good timely time to do it. Um, you know, I think this is well within the capability of public works to do, and I'll let you let Jay talk through what it would take to demolish the building. You're on mute. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so Eric approached me not too long ago about uh, <laughs> what we can do about our uh, storage of our senior transportation vehicles um, and where's a good place. So uh, I've been throwing it around and one of my suggestions was uh, to demo the existing building and build and rebuild there. Um, as of right now, I don't have any um, estimates, cost estimates as far as uh, demoing, you know, what it would take. But other than if we rented an excavator um, with a thumb, you know, it probably costs five, six thousand dollars for an excavator for a week or so. Um, and I'm guessing somewhere around 10 plus minus dumpsters, we can put all the material in there. Uh, minus uh, steel and any concrete, because concrete we can take to our pit and dispose of there. Um, dumpsters can be hauled off by um, our uh, by Willy Waste. Um, and what's the I, what's the current rate of those poles now, Eric? Are they still around three hundred? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I think yeah, it's it's going to go by weight, though. So yeah, there'll there'll be a tonnage. Yeah, for so sure. But just if you figure if you figure a thousand a pop, you're safe. Okay. Um, don't don't so, figure three don't figure three hundred. That's for sure. Well, well I was think, I was thinking on the pull plus the weight. So it's roughly at you know a thousand dollars a dumpster. So another. Uh, 10 plus minus on that. So we're probably looking uh, probably under $20,000 to demo. Um, and that, but that's not including our um, time, you know, our time and, and vehicles, diesel. Uh, that's already part of our budget. Do we have any, do we have any, um, do we have any basins near there on the street? Well, the only basin that uh, that's quite a ways down. Uh, okay. It's right at the inter. It's right at the intersection, the inner center street and three sixteen. Okay, just wanted to make sure. We'd need yeah, a filter. So we can, need filter we can, on it if if it was closer. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we would have to, um, you know, provide some protection. We'd have to do some. Hay bales. We can even put a little berm just to catch anything 
uh, exactly. you know, containment. Uh, yeah, if it's right within a couple hundred feet, lot. if it's within a couple hundred feet, generally you have to, you have, you're required to put a filter in it. So, yeah. Well, it's further than that, but as far as containment on site, that's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, and then we can monitor that down below. Um, but that's really all I have as far as uh, the demo. Um, and, you know, further, do you want a further discussion as far as uh, the building or are we just talking demo right now? I think we can roll right into the building and let's do them all at once. Okay. So the second part of that was, uh, you know, when Eric initially came by, we've been kind of off talking about this quite a while, but uh, we looked at our site at Public Works, um, you know, where potentially we can either do temporary parking or uh, put, placing another building there. Um, in my opinion, um, and in my stubbornness, um, you know, we're, I've been trying to make our uh, public works more efficient, providing areas where we have material storage so we can get it at a moment's notice and be ready. We don't have to go shopping all the time. Uh, we expanded some in the back. We're still working on that, um, which has really helped us out quite a bit. So we really did take a good look at our site. And there's potentially, do you want to bring up the site plan, Eric? Do you have that? You want the, the one for public works? Sure. And why, why he's bringing that up, we were, uh, you know, we got to keep in mind, we got to stay above the floodplain. Would it, you know, would we be able to build another building there? Um, and uh, would Army Corps, or would they even have to be involved? Um, there's one spot that a building may fit on the site, um, which is if you're facing public works, it would be to the left as you're driving down the driveway just before a park, uh, just, did you find it? Yeah, hang on. Okay. Kind of across from the gas tanks in there. Yeah, yeah. And then, and the other problem in that spot is that's where our well is. Currently that's, uh, that area is where we, the employees park um, and the size of the building would, uh, there you go. Can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. There you go. So you can see on the right, the, the right in the center of the public works building and to the right, he's got it hashed out where the, potentially the building could fit. There's also power lines directly behind, which would probably be above the building as it was placed. Um, as, I, as I stated earlier, the employees currently park there. Uh, the driveway that goes around the building would, uh, the, which is, the main driveway that we use to get to the back currently uh, and it would be a little bit more difficult to use or navigate uh, of our equipment and we'd probably end up using more of the driveway closer to the river which is on the opposite side which is not as quite as good a shape as the one we're currently using so we use that far driveway by the river limit on a limited basis um, and then uh, property setbacks from there. We're not sure of the property line. We're kind of assuming that's whereabouts, right? That's the back line, Eric, that you have there drawn. To the yeah, neighbors. we don't actually have a survey of this. All we have is a really old deep description. Um, so it would probably, we would probably have to survey this 
and we would be building within the side yard setback. So this would take a variance um, yeah. to, to enable us to do that. And the building would be pretty much butted up right up against our well, um, which is on the uh, far end, uh, closer to uh, Long Hill. And so, I mean, it sounds like this is a dead issue because you're not going to get a yeah, pool we're not up well, we're, you're we're, not going to, you know, so so what's our next, let's move on to what we're looking so at. Then. Let's go back to the senior, uh, the old firehouse drawing. And while he's bringing up that, we met uh, Monday with uh, Rob from BNS. Engineer, yep. Eric, right? Yep. The engineer. Right. And Ed Sarisley. And I had an other than other than uh demoing the existing building and building within uh using the existing foundation or building another foundation of you know using that existing building. I had an idea initially of building uh putting up a building up top in that parking area. And it sounded good while I was thinking about it, but then the more we talked about it and saw the site, um, there's, some, there's some ledge outcroppings in the area. And we're not too sure that if we put another building up there, whether it would fit due to setbacks and we'd have to do a lot of uh, some test pits in the area, that upper parking lot. Well, if I, if I remember correctly, talking to Kurt Dowling about this a while back, he said they buried some massive, massive pieces of rock in there. So you okay. might end up blasting, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what, what's up there, obviously. And, and then, you know, we were just figuring you got to have a 50 foot uh, setback from the road and then a 35 foot setback from the uh, sidelines. Um, and by the time you put the building in, uh, it, you know, it's just, it, you're going to be constricted and then you still have the cost of demo in the building. And then we got to fill the hole that is left behind. And that's going to be a lot of work too. So, you know, we kind of put our heads together and we came up with an idea that if we demo the existing building, and use the existing foundation as the retaining wall. So, because that's your area that you're, uh, you know, to uh, box out for your new building. And we build new walls within the interior of that building. So basically creating a smaller building, demoing only part of the existing foundation down far enough just so it would be below grade when you end up finishing. So we'd end up putting a 36 by, uh, geez, I forget what the length was. What's the length there? 36 by, 36 by 64. 64, yeah, 65 um, in length. So currently the building's uh, about 40 feet in uh, depth. Um, and we would just take down the top, you know, the walls far enough down, uh, as I said, below grade and putting a structure, uh, on top of the new foundation. Qu questions? I, I, I gotta say, uh, after the um, Memorial Day parade in the that thing that they had down there. There was a lot of people that were very happy with that lot and having the that ceremony there. I think that if we got rid of that building in some way to make it more attractive and put another building in there for the commuter or uh, buses, I think we got a, a winner two ways there. Getting rid of the old building and getting a place for a roof for the all of our vehicles. I have. I just have one question. Has anybody thought about uh, 
and I don't know what the condition is, if it's wetlands or not, the area below the firehouse on School Road. So uh, we, we, Eric and I did visit that site. You're talking about the okay. parking lot where the uh, dry hydrant is? No, I'm just talking about the other side of the firehouse. Yeah, that's too wet. Okay. Uh, the just only thing we could even potentially do it, crazy as it sounds, would be right in the parking area for uh, uh, where the nature pond is. That would take a bunch of, um, it, we would certainly be within 100 feet of a wetlands in any case. There's some possibility, you know, that you could get permission to build a building in there, but it's, it's far from an ideal site and you lose all the parking at the nature pond. My question is just, I just, this putting this building out as a standalone item, I'd like to try to align it with our other structures. That's still my only concern. Having this stand, then you know, if we have some residential development in that area in the future, this if we kept that lot open, especially for affordable housing, I think um, I would just want to be open to that. So that's kind of my only concern. We'd give up space for a garage when we could probably locate it in another location in town and aligned with our other buildings yeah we we looked at that jeff um you know when eric and i tossed that up uh just you know me me putting my two cents worth in there isn't the town doesn't have a lot of properties available where something of this uh you know where would it fit you know it's it's i understand you got standalone there's there's a lot of development costs uh to this just putting it someplace else you have an existing uh structure that you could utilize we can make it look residential you could put a couple of dormers on the roof you know so it looks more residential looking um uh it's it's easy for us to service when we got a plow because is there a reason you know, it's is, is there a reason, close to the garage is there a reason we can't just use the existing foundation and put a you know put a kitty wall on top of it and and you know just do a flat roof a truss flat roof well we we looked at that too and i mean i suggested that myself and you and i both have talked about that adrian and i talked to eric about it too and and in talking with the engineer and, and you have uh the original stone foundation um of the building to the uh west side yep and then and then it was added on how many years later to you know increase the depth of the building yeah adding on a bay and then and then that last structure uh you know adding even more concrete currently there's a couple of spots in the back wall um you know where there, there's some uh uh when the water table is up it leaks a little bit into the into the garage okay. base um you know we could we could fix that stuff as we go along by putting in some better uh drainage footing drains of the new new structures you know new footings just um, one one thing that I would like to ask is um, at the uh, the location where we're planning on building the community center off between the community center and the fire department. Is there any space over there that could be utilized and maybe tied into a building where all the seniors would potentially be? Um, Un unfortunately, not because there is a very large septic field out there. If you go to the school side, on the other side, there's a septic system? It, it goes quite a bit towards the firehouse, yes. Yeah, and directly behind their parking area is wetlands. And, yeah. direct, and, and there's not much room between there and the, uh, the gas line. The only way you could do it is you could run all the way through. You could put a driveway or an access way through past the gas lines and located on town property behind the gas lines. That would be possible. But now you're committing to a fairly significant driveway construction 
we're right. at this way construction to get back there. Because it's not way. it's not a short distance. You would have to go quite a ways back. No, to get out I, of I, I was thinking more that there's the parking lot that is behind Town Hall, then yep. there's the strip of land and the fire department in that area. In that area. Yeah, but again, so that keep in mind the septic field is not it's not a septic field for a house, it's a septic field for a commercial facility, a school in this case, and the town hall. So it's not a small septic field by any stretch. If if you go back actually in your that what's that? Just beyond that is is the wetlands all behind the right, fire. Exactly. That's where the exactly. I do have one other idea. Unfortunately, it would not address Jeff Murray's concern about residential um if you were to take the size building that you're proposing and looking at the the, the shared screen we currently have if you put it in the upper left you know the up centered it in that upper you know left you know quadrangle whatever i can't remember my geometry terms but basically it's kind of move it up into the left and center in that area and yeah, yeah exactly right there if you did that and instead of doing a traditional foundation, we did what's called a, mono, a monolithic slab. You wouldn't have to do very much digging at all. Um, you basically have to go down about 24 inches and just put stone. You put insulation panels, and then you pour your, you pour your floor on top of that. Um, and it allows you to put a, it's basically a, a, a construction technique that allows you to put something somewhere without really doing a, a, a deep footing. So that would protect us from having to do some massive digging and your excavated material could then be used to help fill in um, your demoed area. Yeah, we, again, Adrian, we thought of that too. And, and uh, you know, it, it brought us right back to, it, are we utilizing the, that lot in its, it, for its best use if the public now wants to use that that's you know that's open space basically up top behind that behind the building as it is yeah that you know uh just as of late it was used for the uh memorial day parade for the celebration right so once, if you put a building there once, now you lost it it gets used once a year what's the difference but people are talking about selling that property yeah and and, and my 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 thought process in this is my concern is it's by the time you sit there and, and do some of the engineering required to do the, the, you know, the building in a building, and then we're going to have to make some, we're going to have to make some improvements because of the water issue that you've already mentioned. Um, it may be less expensive to go the other route to do a monolithic slab, you know, in the upper corners. And as long as we meet our setbacks, which I think we would, I don't see the, I don't see the well location on here. I, I don't it's I'm right sure. in behind it's right in behind the between the uh walkway there and the building right off of that right in the corner there so so we'd be okay for that we'd be okay you, for the well so you would not meet the setback requirements because this zone has a 50 yard front yard setback requirement and if you look at that size of the lot and you take this building is basically around 68 feet long which is not much longer than the original if you stuck that in the corner you are not making the front yard setback so this are you telling me eric that we can't get a variance i'm not saying you can't get a variance well and, and ironically i don't think any any house on the street has a 50 has a 50 foot setback so no i i understand Listen, but I, I, don't, I don't care where the the, the those buses need to be under cover for the benefit of the seniors of this community. I don't care where it goes. I don't care how it gets done. We got to figure out what we're doing. So well, let, can we start by, can we start by, what's a, I would like to move forward with the demolition. I think that's the smartest play at this point. We're, we're spending money on power and heat on that building, especially where oil is right now. I think it makes sense to if you don't have an alternative for the buses, the bus storage, you're not tearing the building. Yeah, we have to find a storage unit for the buses. Please put the buses. 
you're going to have to move the buses during construction anyways. And there's a time there's a timetable for the steep grant. We, Are we, we suggesting this make, is this, is this something decision. is this something we want a steep grant? I would suggest if you're going to do it, this is going to be expensive enough. We're going to want to grant fund this. Yeah. I have one more question. Um, don't we own a chunk at Shoddy Mill before you enter the transfer station going up the hill? Right on the road? Yes, we do, but it's not, I don't think it's flat there. I think it goes it's, downhill pretty readily there. It's pretty flat. It's pretty flat from what I remember. I just didn't know if we'd looked at that or not either. My 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 suggestion for doing that is trying to keep, like I said, everything kind of grouped together, all our town complexes grouped together. Um right. Just having this building stand alone just kind of concerns me a little bit. Just vandalism, you know, just having it as a standalone, not part of the complex. It's, it gives me some concerns. Jeff, if nobody's vandalized this old firehouse the way that it's, uh, yeah. it's then I, I don't think, come on. <laughs> We're not going to vandalize I'm just it. asking the question. I'm just trying to consider all the other sites that we have in town. No, I'm with you. I would love, I, I swear to God, that my, my, my mind after everybody's talking is where can you do it by the town hall, by the new building? Again, Eric is 100% correct yeah. that you, the only, your only option for doing it over the town hall is to move it out over, past the wetlands area and across. And, and it's, it's a commitment to a road or building project. So, right. It's all, it's very, very wet in there. Very wet. Now, now if, if, we are eventually going to utilize that, you know, for a senior housing project, you know, committing to do that isn't the worst thing in the world, but it is, it is money. And that, that would be a fairly expensive. Um, and the other thing about this is when you demo that building, you know, you got about 700 cubic yards of material we need to bring back in to fill in where the existing foundation is. So, We'll get it from the pit, but that's still an awful lot of trips and an awful lot of trucking in from public works. So, I mean, one of the things I was trying to do is avoid that as part of the process. Now, Adrian's right. If we use the upper site, some of that material that we took out could be used for that. So that would be a possibility. Right. But there's only, there's so, only so much material on a 24-inch cut. No, you're absolutely right. There is. But I, I think um, you don't have to fill the whole thing. I think you have to, you know, work on a, you, you have to grade out that slope and put some slope retention in, you know? Yeah. So you're yes. not trying to fill the whole thing. You're, you're actually trying to fill probably about, you know, half. Mm. It's, it's, it's a lot more than that, Adrian. The, the grade is almost it's, up to the roof on, on, on that one side on the, mm -hmm. It's the uh, no, I mean, I mean, half the, side. Building, half the building space is all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. all right. So we still have to find the appropriate location for this, but we can't tear that building down until you find a home for the buses. Yeah. Right. Well, I think the, temporarily you can leave the buses outside for long no, enough. That's absolutely unacceptable. No, you can't. I, I, I kind of vote no, too. Think oh, about man. the winter for, for the, we're having enough trouble finding bus drivers and you want them to go out there and clean those vehicles when it snows? Come on, no, it's, 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 no. Not, it's, not, it's not an option. Okay, then let's not talk about the site because if, we're, if we can't ever have the vehicles out from the building, we're gonna have to keep this building and not demo it until after we pick another location. Pick a location, let's pick a location. I like Adrian's idea, okay. to be really honest. Well, if that's what you want, that's what we'll pursue. I mean, I like my idea the best, which is put it up near the town hall. But if, if you can't put it up at the town hall, I like Adrian's. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If, you know, to Eric's, again, to Eric's point, which I'm getting kind of sick of agreeing with him tonight, but I'll deal with it, um, is that as we go, if you're going forward, you know, we just had a conversation about, you know, affordable housing and being a developer and all this other stuff as you're going forward if we were to invest as a town in putting in that 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 roadway um 
that would be a huge first step towards getting a developer to actually look at that parcel. Right. But Adrian, for, for one thing, the road would not cross the gas line in the location that you guys are talking about. The driest spot is up at the top of the hill. Okay. And that's where you would go into those properties where the road to the 70 acres. And, and what, when you say the top of the hill, can you, yeah, right, right over, right, you know, in the vicinity of the community guard, the garden and the uh, sure. community center. It's going to go in right through there. That's the driest spot. There's some wetlands in the back there. You're going to cross the okay. uh, gas line and you go into it that way. It's just, yeah. it's, it's, the further you go down the hill there behind the fire department, it's all it's wetlands no, right I, away. And I don't, I don't care where that road goes in over there, but I'm just saying, if we were to invest in doing that, and put the building in a clear spot back there, right. um, that would be a great first step towards. Right, it, and, and Jeff McGuire's idea is good to put it in there tight in someplace, but if, if you're gonna put a road through there, it's wet. So the road's not gonna go there. It's gonna You'd go. Have to move, so you move to, need to move the road up a little higher. So, but and, and then if you wanted to put this new building that we're proposing up there, there's no room for it. Because it immediately goes right into the school's property. And, and not the school's property and Andover's property, but you know, there's there's no place to put it. It's a playground. Well, actually, one of the things that was discussed and, and one of the things that was super important to Ed Sarisley was that when the community center plans were put together with Rob, that there that that space between the school and the community center is, is large enough that you could put a roadway through there. Exactly. And there is there's plenty of room, Adrian. Okay. But to, to put both of those buildings in there would not work. No, but you could put one and then the roadway back to the other. A am I wrong, Scott? Well, you could, you could put a roadway in through the woods there, but where would right. you put the building that we're proposing? As soon as you get back into the woods and you're clear of the, of the wetlands area. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you couldn't do that. Yeah. Got to get a big grant. Set off a big grant. Yeah. Especially yeah. at. Uh, All right. Let's let's so bigger, we, uh, so bigger, we just get a, Can we just get a budgetary so, estimate for what the road would cost? How much is how much a foot, Jay, on on a road nowadays? I three hundred. I don't know at this point. It's a million a mile. It, it, yeah, but that was last year, Adrian. No, it's a million a mile. That's the going rate. To build, construct a road is about a million a mile. Yeah, so you got to go 800 feet back there to put that building that we're talking about. That's, uh, you know, I don't know, what, what is it, like four or 500, Jay, for a road nowadays? A foot? Four or 500 what for a road? A foot. I don't know, Scott. I would say, you know, we're talking three or $400,000. Oh yeah, you're probably three or four hundred k to get back there. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't debate that at all. But listen, well, right now we're it was, talking. It was we, it was Jeff's idea. I'm just trying to run with his vision. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion, please? Yes, Paula. Can we, for next meeting, can we have option one, with pros and cons, and some maybe some numbers behind it? So option would. One maybe Adrian suggestion with pros and cons yeah. and numbers associated with cost. Option yeah. two would be um, Jeff McGuire's suggestion, and then with num pros and cons and numbers to that. I feel and like that would, be, that, that would all would be good. Listen, it's a great idea, but let's be honest Eric is one person with yeah. a laundry list of stuff on his plate, including. You know, steep cramp submissions and July fifteenth and personnel changes and a bunch of other stuff. So, I so think. So how do we? How do we? How do we pick something tonight? What's What's the suggestion? Uh, I feel like we're. I don't, I don't think this goes. I don't think this goes forward tonight. I think unfortunately, this gets pushed. You know, we're we're slowly picking off big things. The community center is moving is moving forward now. Um, I, I don't. I don't think you haphazardly make these decisions. We need to plan them out a little more. And I think we need to give our, our staff time to, 
to do the things that we've already tasked them with doing before we dump a lot of other stuff on their plate. So what I'm trying to say is I, I feel like we're talking in circles. We're trying to find, we're trying to pick a site to move forward with and we can't, we can't right now. So I think we move on unless you I, I, think otherwise. And, and we try and find some more information down the line when we can. I do think that we should talk about demoing this building though, at some point in the near future. Um, you know. Oh, from my perspective, the, the only thing I would say is that if, if this is a consideration for a steep grant, you know, we need to, the decision needs to be made pretty much now because we've got essentially two months from today to submit. And wait. the state is looking for month. shovel ready projects, which means we're going to need to commit and spend engineering dollars with a structural engineer and with a surveyor. Um, and we're going to need to be going for it kind of full blast right now. Right away. Um, if we're not going to do that, then we just, you know, say, okay, we're not going to, this is not going to be a consideration for steep grant. And then we look at other things for steep grants. I mean, I mean looking at looking at the list of options that you gave us for steep grants, I think there's plenty of other things that we can put in for the, you know, and spend the funds pretty quickly. I mean, road work to me was top of that list. And there's certainly enough money in road work that we could spend, um, you know, through a steep grant to, to, to fill out the 500K pretty quickly. Yeah, and I, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out if we're going to put this under the steep grant because we we don't have numbers associated with this unless yeah, I, I i think we'd be i think we'd be rushing this to get you know to get an accurate assessment beforehand i would rather us look at the road work it's the number one complaint from residents in town you know and we we've, we've been making some progress it'd be nice to make a little more progress so and then we try to work at structuring you know going forward with this come up with some some ideas where where's the roof for the our buses can you can you rephrase that question i'm not sure what you're asking what we need to have a roof over the buses for the, the winter this this winter what, what do we, how are we going to address that are we not parking them there currently yeah, but the roof is falling in. <laughs> yeah, the, is it really bad? It's yeah, the, bad. here, here's the here's the issue, and I don't know who's been down there lately to look at that building, but uh, well, I mean, I felt something, through something bad's going to happen in there. Yeah, uh, somebody's got to somebody's got to go in there and take the ceilings down because they're they're falling in, and the garage doors are dragging them down when the garage doors open and close, and you got these massive holes uh in the soffits especially on the uh i would call it the east end of the building right the raccoon's been going in and out of that end for years yeah the uh, east side of the building had a very soft roof several years ago i mean I, I i did a site inspection on it about six years ago and it was so soft i i actually was worried i was going to fall through so yeah uh, everyone needs to go down there and look at that building just don't I know how bad it is. I've seen it. I've been in, I've looked at it. It's bad. You know, I, I um, I'm just, I, I just got to propose something. I mean, we have, we have some money in our community center fund. Wouldn't, couldn't we cover s most of the expenses for that out of the community center fund since this is community center related for, for what specifically demolition and the construction of a new garage. Yeah. If you can pick a site. You know, if we can pick a site, we can pay for it with those funds. We have those funds ready to go. And then we could use our steep grant money for other app, you know, other things like Adrian was saying, road work or or whatever we choose for. But we have that money. I mean, then we could just free it up. And if, if everybody's in agreement with that it would be at a acceptable purpose or use for that fund, those funds. I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that. Um I just wouldn't go crazy using them because we haven't got a number back yet. Because if 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 the numbers come back over a million, they're gonna come back way over a million because they'll it'll be once we break million we have to go to yeah we're gonna go be we're gonna be prevailing wage oh, until we get their rfp yep what's that i i, I agree with you yeah so I, I would like to wait before we commit to that i'd like to at least just let's get a let's get our 
let's get the RFP numbers back from the community center before we make that commitment. That's all. If, if, if we come back and it's clean, then, you know, then I, and we make that decision, I don't have a problem with it. And I would support it. I mean, what do you think a Steve grant would be for the to demo and to replace that hundred thousand? I would have figured considerably more than that. I would assume that we were going to be into that at least a couple hundred thousand by the time you demo that, build a new structural, you know, foundation and, uh, you know, plunk a roof line on top of it. And if it were me, what I would chuck on top of it would be like a bonus room truss, a 36 foot wide bonus room truss. So I had some potential future storage so we could finish it off at some point later. That's what, you know, in my mind, that seems like the most logical, you know, and then what you do is then you put a couple fake dormers on the front. So it looks vaguely residential and doesn't look out of place in the, in the area where it's at. Looks better than it looks now. Um, it's far more functional than what we have now. And, you know, we're pretty much set from there for senior transportation. That would be my take on it. And we'll still, just, need a, we'll still need a variance, though, for that, because even using the existing space, we're demoing more than 50% of the building, so we'd have to get a new permit. Yes. However, remember, we are, what we're doing is we're reducing the nonconformity from what it is now. So okay, getting fair a enough. variance is more likely than putting it in the upper part. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I think Eric's right. You're probably... You're, you're probably all said and done. You're going to spend 50K on the demo, even if we do it in-house. If you go out, off, if we contract out, it's going to be way more. But you're 50K in-house, and you're going to be easily 125 to 150. So you, sh you should be budgeting 200 plus for this. Well, the construction I was looking at, I mean, I was getting a steel buildings for my house, I mean, with a decent facade. And, you know... Three three car garage was right in the neighborhood of fifty thousand. You're absolutely right, but that doesn't include putting in electrical or insulation or any of the other things. It also doesn't include trying to make it more residential, unfortunately. But are we gonna are we gonna make this heated and are we gonna just make it a storage building like we have now? That's the question. Are we gonna just well, the, the the purpose is to get the to get the vans out of the snow and the weather, not to not to heat them all all. I think the question is how far are we going towards residential? Right. If if we're going more towards residential, that's going to take money to make it look more residential. That's why I like to try to find more of an industrial spot if we could. That was part of our existing complex. Mm -hmm. That's so. actually, Jeff. You know, I, I believe that that's my biggest conflict on this putting it there that doesn't stick with the residential. But if you can make it make it look residential, I, I understand what you're saying about that. That's one of my problems. But it's still it's the best. It's our best alternative right now. It really, so we can certainly make it look a lot better than what's there now. Right. There's no question about that. Uh, so, would we? Do we need to have the variance and all that stuff approved before we go for a steep grant? Um, we need to have it as close to shovel ready as possible. So. Thanks. They, I mean, they said that the permits, it's uh, highly advisable to have all the permits re that are required in, in hand. And what's the deadline on steep? It's August 15th. That seems a bit implausible to me that we could do it. No question, it's a push. It's a push. Are you saying that you want to try to tackle this, Eric, if we approve it? I'm not saying I have a burning desire to. I'm saying given that our objective is to find a home for senior transportation um, and Steve Grant is a viable funding mechanism and I don't know of any others right now that we can tap you know, conveniently, I think this is a good option. Um, and I would put my head down and pursue it if that's what the board wants. Jeff, Jeff, thoughts? Listen, that's something that has to get done. Murray, I'm saying it's it, this is this is a need we're going to have to we're going to have to address. 
I mean, we're going to lose a van. If that if something heavy falls in that building, we damage one of the vans. All right. I mean, we're going to be kicking our stuff. I make a motion that we authorize, authorize Eric to pursue, you know, uh, to pursue this as a steep grant option, and we allot two hundred fifty thousand towards the project for seed funds. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion. Do we, before we vote on this, do we want to have an extended conversation about? the steep grant or what else we want to talk about before we decide on this? Well, I, we, and we've certainly got a, a full list from Eric to fill in the rest. I think we probably need to go to the list. And, and Paula, what, are, what exactly were the, what was your thoughts on what part of that? Before we decide this is a done deal for the steep grant, do we want to have a full conversation about what else we want to look into for the steep grant before we put, you know, this in the, in that, the ring. Right. Yeah. The, the, the school's talking about a, a playground, I guess. Right. Paula is that Right. We haven't heard from yeah. Valerie yet about that. And we haven't discussed everything else about what we want to put in possibly into the steep grant. So is there a maximum Eric? Yeah, there's a maximum of 500000 for the town, um, but it can be multiple grants. I personally only want to be responsible for submitting one, um, whether I submit one for 500000 or whether I submit one for less than that. I have the bandwidth right now potentially to do one good grant application. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, if you want it out of the town, uh, unless you're volunteering to submit one of the steep grants uh, or develop it yourself, um, the the town I think should should take a ta should tackle one. Um, so if we were to do this, that would probably be our steep grant from the town's perspective. But it if would we're doing be, if we're doing road work though, wouldn't that really be something that Jay would be more involved in? Could uh, well, Eric, could we additionally add some road work to the steep grant? What Eric's saying is he only wants to do one. So if we did a road work grant, it would fall upon Jay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the question is, where's Jay? I'm still here. <laughs> All right. Thoughts, Jay? Uh, I you want more money for paving. I would love more money for paving. I just don't know how much time I can put in this between now and uh, the time the uh, grant is available. Right now we're swamped getting shoddy and, and getting our uh, uh, road work done right now. So this we goes, got going this, on. So this goes back to how much time you have versus how much time Public Works is taking up for projects. Yep. I so mean, we got- it is, I didn't get out of there till 4.30 tonight. So the school does have a proposal they'd like to put forward. Do we want to hear that from Valerie? That might be appropriate. Yes, let's. Thanks. <laughs> um, hi. So, um, yeah, I, um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to address. I know that, you know, we've been talking now for about 90 minutes about um, a bunch of different things that the town is looking to advance. And I know that, a big focus has been on really the community center and that being, you know, a lot of the undivided attention at this point. Um, I know that there was a mention of the steep grants and the town applying for steep grants. I don't know um, how quickly you'll be able to get some of the other stuff together by the deadline. Um, it's eight weeks away. Um, I do know that on the school end, I shared um, with you guys that we do, it's funny that I think it was Jed that was talking before about an increase to population or a decrease. Um, we are over 200 for next year and the demographic of our students is changing. We actually have um, some bigger changes. We've got some students that are entering next year with disabilities, one particular student with disabilities that's coming to us in the fall um, has significant physical disabilities. 
And um, we do not have anything in town that's ADA compliant. We do not have um, facilities for students in wheelchairs or adults to push students in wheelchairs at, um, at, at any of the facilities now. Um, I actually already did go through with um, O'Brien and Sons to come up with um, a proposal for different phases of looking at updating, innovating, um, and making ADA compliant um, our existing facilities that are, are in our yard now. I think it's very timely with the fact that the big project for the town is going to be the community center and its proximity to our backyard means that everybody's gonna wanna use it. So um, I, I would ask for consideration this year for um, the ability to uh, submit a steep grant um, on behalf, not just of the school, for the, the town to be able to have this kind of facility. We're really talking about the back of the town hall and the school being the hub um, of everything that we're talking about creating here for the future of Andover. Um, and so I, I know that a big consideration with the steep grant is being able to be pretty much shovel ready. And since we already have facilities there, we are talking about innovating and updating, so we're shovel ready. Um, it does take weeks to, you know, have, have um, some kind of an agency uh, come up with a quote, um, things like that. I've already done all of that, so getting an August fifteenth um, proposal in for a grant is not a problem. If you guys were to decide that, you know, we don't want to not be prepared to turn in some kind of a town steep grant. Um, and so I would say that before <laughs> a decision's made, I would ask that you guys at least consider, um, you know, having this be, I mean, I would do the work with the steep grant. Um, I'm not asking for anybody else's time to do that. I'm kind of just asking for permission for this to be uh, a possible project um, that we look at, especially considering the fact that demographically um, I do have children entering one particular one um, that is entering school in the fall and we currently don't have anything that's ADA. So how do you, how would you propose um, the co-funding requirement for the steep grant? Um, well, from the, we have to talk about what the matching co-funding um, portion is from what I can see in there now. Um, there's a couple of requirements um, that we would have to go through to see if it is a 20% requirement um, that we get that or not. Um, I'm not quite sure the way you read it. It says that you must have the 20% match. So if it's a 20% requirement, how would the school fund it? I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking you, is there a 20% requirement? So I can answer you that question. So I sat through the webinar with Martin Heft and there is and there isn't. And by that, I mean, they were very clear that any project that has less than a 20% municipal match will not be considered until all possibilities with a minimum of a 20% match are considered. Um, and since I think it's unlikely that there aren't going to be enough steep grants um, to go through the $30 million state allotment, you know, he basically said, you can put one in with no match if you want, but don't expect to get it. So that's how I would put it. Well, I think with any of the grants that we would put in for the town, that would be, I think, an issue was we'd all be taking a risk. I don't know that we have 20% for a $500,000 grant to go in for anything. So um, I, I, that's for us to, we're asking about the school. I know, I know, I know but I'm just saying I, I did read through the requirements and they, they will consider one um, without a municipal match if all of the other requirements like the fact that the foundation is already there, the foundation, uh, I mean, the, um, the fact that it's shovel ready, the fact that it's, you know, going to be falls under the category of recreation and it's, you know, going to be something that helps the uh, community. So. so, so Val, just so I understand this, so the, the 
application that you're looking to submit is $250,000 grant, correct? Yeah, but but it doesn't necessarily, it, that is, the project itself is $258,000. However, what we got through O'Brien and Sons was um, phases of the project. So Jeff, if you guys said, you know, we're only allowed to put in 500,000 by August 15th, Val, and, and we're not going to let you even try to get 258,000. Um, there are portions of the project that are also ready to go for an application. If you said you can only put in and ask for a hundred thousand. Okay. So, I mean, the, the, the problem Val and where I think, you know, if we went to, if we went to road work, we have road funding already in, in place. So to push money around that way would be a little bit different. And so we have to sit there and identify what, what we can assist you with. And you have to sit there and come back to us and let us know if the school board or the school has any available funding that can be put into that. So, I mean, 20% of 250, you know, you're looking at $50,000 in, in that number. So, well, let's all look at, we're gonna to have to get with Eric and understand what well, Eric would put in and then we can go from there. Can I ask Eric, Eric if, if you, if you had three different, if you had the AES project and road funding and the, the new uh, building for the buses, I mean, could those be, could you put the two things for the town together and additionally add this on and then use our matching funds for their matching funds? Huh? Uh uh, that I'm not. I, I Say mean, that I again, Scott. No, I want clarification. What is he saying? He, he he's asking a question: Is is the, can the town use the funding to assist the school? Um, I think what you end up with, Scott, is you end up with a uh, a poorly written grant. You're going to have to, if you're going to allow the school to do, it, you have to have two different grants. You have the town grant that Eric writes, one grant for two fifty for whatever project Eric would go after or we would recommend that Eric go after and then the school would have a $250,000 grant for its project. The problem that Adrian addressed is where is the where are the 20% funds coming from? Like I can visualize how we get the funding for road work. Um, it's more difficult for Valerie and for that project to find $50,000 you know, do we have that in the building fund? Do we have that somewhere else? Can we come up with it some other place? Yes, but I think what we have to do is we have to listen to to to, to Eric and to sit there and see what projects he could potentially write grants for. Well, I think okay. I have I have one other question just for clarification on the school. So that's basically adding on to an existing playground, correct? It would be updating, innovating, renovating, and making ADA compliant, yes. But that playground is closed to town residents during school hours, correct? Only during school hours, yes. It's open after school on the weekends and the summers. It's open to the rest of the community. And we now have the community garden next door, you know, so you do have people that use it on the weekends when they're there with that as well. So I no, just... I'm just asking for clarification in the sense that, you know, there, there's been a lot of ask for a project, you know, like this specifically, you know, an accessible playground, but also to have that playground be available during the school day when, you know, if you've got a one to four year old that's not in school, you know, that they, you can bring them down to the playground, so. Well, you know. they certainly can before and after school and three through, the kids three and up are already in our school, so. Hmm. Okay. So I just have a question where what's the 250,000 for because you know I did some reading on this before the meeting and it appears the standards are if you have a playground 30% of it has to be um, stations or activities that are ADA compliant or accessible by a wheelchair. So if we have 10 you know fields or things on the playscape three of those have to be at the ground level or accessible. And um and another thing is the slope, like we're talking about getting this from the community center. There is some regulations on how to get the wheelchair ramps to, to a certain height, and it has to be one foot for every 12 feet. 
So it would be almost impossible for us to get from the community center to the playground based on the elevation. So we'd have to come up with some other plan to get people in there. From the um, community side. Yes. So from the back of the school, um, from the back of the school, let's say down by where the seniors had their lunch the other day, um, where our garage is. There, from where the garage is all the way up to the back in existence already is um, pavement that goes all the way around to the other side. So you can get from one side of the school where the other side of the playground is to the right side over there. You can get all the way back down to the, um, what do you call it, uh, to the garage. But the Jeff, Jeff is asking if the pavement's ADA compliant. It's not ADA. It has to be, it has to be one foot of elevation for every 12 feet. So it's too steep. So, so, but right now, since the playground itself is not ADA compliant, the, um, the what do you call it, would have to be extended from the walkway that currently exists there down to the the swing sets and the appropriate materials there. That's where we're not compliant. Right, the, the access from the town side, Jeff, would just, you know, the, the grade in the back is less. It just, the grade, it would change. That's all. So Valerie, yeah, the plan from the town the side plan. to the school side would be in a different place than the grade that you're talking about. So Valerie, the plan addresses that, the grading issue from the town side or only from the school side? Well, it, it, it would if this is what we're looking at. Um, I haven't gotten that far yet. That would be added in there, but we do have um, the rest of the costs of the actual equipment. Well, there was a huge plan. I know John showed me a plan at the meeting, so it's not currently, it's not addressed in the current plan. The grading from the town, no, because the okay. original plan itself would have focused on the attention of getting from school to playground. Now we would just have to add the community center to playground. Okay. Okay, so um, we're, we're still on the new business items to try to allow Jay to move on. Um, what else do we have for Jay? Well, I don't know what Jen is going to be part of. So we'll go back to the steep grant submissions at later. So we had nine, um, the purchase of a portable PA system. I'm assuming that's Carol Lee. I don't know if Carol's uh, No, I think Jeff wanted that added to the agenda. With Jeff and Paula, probably. Okay. Um, we just want, uh, we just, I think it's time we get a portable. PA system for the something that's reliable for the town to use for parades and events. All right, Paula, do that's you have a, an idea cost. Yeah, Jeff Jeff was looking into it. So Jeff, you want to I'd just say under, up. under five hundred dollars we could get something we can get something really good. And this is going to be used at you know outdoor events and things senior the, lunches, all the all the events that we have. Okay. Excellent idea. Yeah, the system we have, it's just, you know, it's a little wheeled box and it's, I don't know how old, doesn't, it's not very reliable for the Memorial Day parade. Oh my God, we're talking about $500. Let's just approve it already. Yep, let's yeah, let's just make a motion to approve it. Just find it and, and, and to be clear, our, if we're moving on to something else, when are we coming back to Steve Grant stuff? Because, you know, Valerie's on this call. She's had a long day as well. So. What, you know what, Adrian, what I was thinking is, should we just, should we, should we just have a separate meeting? Everybody put their proposals together, decide what we want to put the Steve Grant in for. Let's do a Probably special, a good idea. Let's just do a special meeting next week. We'll all meet. Let's put our proposals on the table. Let's decide what we're going to use our Steve Grant for. So everybody knows what they're going to get spent for. Spent on. Okay. What do you want back from me in terms of the town? Because I, what I did was I gave you all a list of things, which I yeah, thought- Yeah, you gave us a huge list, yep. Right, it, but because it's really your decision. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to spend the money on. Um, I'll put the grant in for whatever it is that you want. You know, the only thing I would say is that, you know, the decision has to be made whether we're going to split and do two grants, in which case one will probably be the school grant, um, or whether you want to go for one big grant. Um, so he sent us an email on 6-6, which was uh, Monday. A week ago, it was a week ago uh, regarding this. So. Right. 
But what I am saying is if we are going to consider the putting the, the building where it is now for senior transportation, then that means I need to get some structural engineering work done and some surveying work done. Very and, quickly. Um, and I would, we would have to make that decision pretty quickly and just take that money out of the multi-use building fund, which would be reasonable. If we did do that, you know, that limits the loss to the multi-use building fund to about you know, $50,000 and the other 200,000 would be out of the grant, um, presuming we got it. That's how I would approach it. If that was the way you as a board wanted to go. If you want to do a road work project, we could easily spend the full $500,000 on a road work project. Um, we would have to come up with $100,000 out of our budget to match, which would give us about a $600,000 project if we were trying to do just one. But well, um, we could use money we've already put aside for paving for that, right? Well, maybe not. Clarification? Well, the existing paving uh, RFP came back a little higher than we would like. It's considerably higher than it was two years ago. Um, so we're going to be pushing to spend a fair bit of money this year to get the reclaim and repave for Long Hill and Shoddy done. Could we shift pay payment for that? I, I guess my, I wanna get clarification in the sense that my concern, and I, I, I like I, I like the idea of trying to do something for a, you know, for a, a playground. My big concern for this other issue is though, is, you know, you have until August 15th to get this done, we're saying we definitely need permits to do that. That means you basically either, you've got to get the, the, the approval, you've got to go through a, a regular building meeting and then get a variance meeting and get an approval at that meeting in the next, give or take, you know, 60 days. I don't know that I couldn't do that with an administrative approval. Um, because I'm not increasing right. the nonconformity. There's already a building there too, Adrian. No, I understand that. I just don't want us to be, I just don't want us to come August, you know, August 10th and, and we go, oh, we, we can't get that meeting in in time. So actually we're, we're, we're we are replacing that building. Again, I, I, I don't care what the, 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 the language is. I just want to know that we can get this done. If not, then we should be talking about paving. We should be talking about paving. Murray? If we're not gonna have the time to address this, I would say we uh, focus on the paving. I, and I think it's important that we put a playground back there and it is ADA compliant. I would just like to get a little bit more understanding where the $250,000 is going and get an itemized list and like a statement of work of what's going to be done. Oh, listen, the, the 250, the 250 yeah. sounds like a bargain because I can tell you when we were looking at trying to do playground upgrades before um, with the rec commission, um, it was ridiculously expensive just for a small, not even ADA compliant, just a small, playground piece yes adrian i get i get that but i just i i think as a board we should just do our due diligence to make sure that we review whatever the proposal is that we have okay okay so what are you all looking for me going forward what's your level of confidence that you can get this done by august 15th that's what we're trying to figure out there because I think, we'll have to, I think if we knew we were going for it right now we could have a pretty good grant submission on the table um august 15th for well, what for the building uh, for the for the storage of the senior transportation units or for a road work? for this for either either we gotta we gotta pick one right so you're saying you can get this done by august 15th i can say that i will get one good steep grant out the door by august 15th for either a building or for another project you know, especially a road work project um, in that time period. Fine. I will make a motion then that we authorize the 
uh, town administrator to put together a steep grant for up to $250,000 for the um, of two hundred fifty thousand dollars of skeet grant money plus the matching funds from the town for a storage building for senior transportation vehicles in the old fireworks the old firehouse location and additionally two hundred fifty thousand oh. dollars authorized the school to put together a grant for that their playground submission it would need to be ada compliant from both sides i'll second that as long as Everything is, uh, we get some finalized plans, you know, with our next meeting. Some kind of plans. We got to be able to see something like Jeff Murray was saying. The, We're gonna the, have, school ha the school has a whole, they have a plan already in place. They just need to share it with us. That's not a big deal. And then, and then the $50,000 funding is not going to be a problem? That's a Valerie question. I can't answer. Yep. yep. The steep grant says that it's not a requirement. It says preference to um, to matching, preference to shovel ready, but it's not a requirement. I'm just, I'm just nervous to what Eric said. I just don't want to have you lose your consideration if we don't have the matching funds, that's all. When is your meeting? We, we haven't said it yet. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've currently, well, no, we scheduled, I thought we were having a meeting two Mondays from now on the 27th already. Yeah, that was for the charge of the yep. We can address this there. Okay, I'll make sure you guys have it by then. And then you can make a decision if it's submittable or not. Okay. Thank you. All right, so are we done with the grant and the steep grant section? Nine. You gotta move those motions forward, Jeff. Nobody voted. Oh. I seconded seconded it. it. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Five nothing. So now let's move on to. Uh, so, did we sit there and push forward the purchase of the portable PA system and have Eric? Somebody's going to sit there and get the numbers. I will make a motion that Eric be authorized to purchase a PA system for under $600 for town events. Second. Okay. Paula got it. She seconded. Got it. All those. In favor. The only only addition I'd like to put on there is that uh, just work with Paul and myself just to make sure we get something that we feels appropriate for the town. I'll amend the motion that Jeff Murray gets to pick it out. Well, where are Paul. we going to pay for this from? We're going to find a line item here. Let's see how good we are. Kathy Palazzi has to stop laughing though. Okay. Paula, you're seconding that again? Yes. All right, all those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Uh, 9G, resolution regarding driver, driveway apron permits. Okay, I put this at the back of your uh, uh, meeting motions that I sent you, and I also sent this to you uh, or, or we discussed it once previously. So right now there's an ordinance that says the Board of Selectmen has to sign off on every single driveway apron, every single curb cut, everything. Well, um, we know that with that has never happened though. Right, so all I'm saying is that we should actually pass a resolution to give the responsibility where it belongs, which is to Jay and Public Works to sign off on these and that's what the resolution does. And then what I would suggest is that the only things we bring back to you are things that would have major effects on the road. Because at some point, it's serious enough that Jay's not going to want to sign off on it without at least talking to you. But I think he has plenty of judgment to figure out when that is. Right. So my suggestion is you approve the resolution and we move on. Okay, only, my only question in reading the resolution is, I, I want to make sure that we have a system in place that Jay is notified when a certificate of occupancy is issued and before the bond is released. Because Jay needs to go and approve before those bonds get released. Whoever's doing this needs to be responsible for that. 
so you want that added to this this ordinance? Yeah, we got to put it somewhere. I don't care where it gets. How do we want to address it? Eric, suggestions? So currently, before anybody gets their driveway apron bond back, uh, Jay has to sign off on that as the public works foreman. So nobody gets their money back for the driveway apron unless it gets approved. Um, okay. And it's the same thing with any bond for a, you know, road or curb, whatever, road or yeah. curb cut or anything. I anything. mean, so you're, so you're currently signing those, Jay? Yes. How many have you done this year? And then, and then Eric usually reviews those as well before a check is issued back. So you're going out and looking at them already. Correct. Okay, I'm fine then. So I would make a motion that we approve the resolution delegating board of selectmen authority for permits regarding driveways connecting the roads and towns to the public works supervisor of the town as for, so written by Eric Anderson and forwarded to us in our meeting packet. The only thing? correction is that was written by Dennis, not myself. You, you, you want to read this? No, it's ridiculously long. No. It's in the packet if somebody wants to look at it. It's a lot of legalese. Dennis was on, on point when he did this one. You only got to read the last paragraph, Adrian. Therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Vandover, the authority and responsibility of the Board, to approve and refuse approved plans and specifications for the installation of any driveway connecting with any highway maintained by the Town of Andover, issue a permit after approving any such plans and specifications, and to approve and accept performance bonds prior to any such approval or issuance of permit, to ensure completion of the work in accordance with such plans and specifications, comma, be officially, legally, and permanently delegated to the public works supervisor of the town of Andover, effective immediately, moved by selectman Adrian Mandeville, seconded by Scott seconding, Brisson. Scott Brisson, and so voted on this day, 2022. And that is just one small portion of it. That's why we're not reading the whole thing. Okay, so the only one you have to read, Adrian. Thank you, sir. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Jeff Murray. Aye. Thank you. All those opposed, no, let's uh, move on. So that's um, H, employee education funding for job skills. All right. So this is a question for the board. Our current personnel policy allows us to pay up to $500 for employee education. Can we pause for a second? Is, are we down with Jay? Uh, no, actually, because this involves one of his employees. There we go. Yep. A couple so, more minutes. No, no, I just want to make sure we're not hanging on to you, buddy. <laughs> no, I, trust me, I get it. So uh, specifically, Zach has asked to consider whether the town would be willing to pay for a portion of the cost for an associate's degree, basically in public works. Um, there's a uh, essentially an online degree program that's been created that is specifically geared towards uh, public works supervisories or supervisors. And since I think long-term Probably Jay's replacement, if we were going to come from in-house, would likely be Zach. The question is, are you as a board, would you consider a proposal to pay part of the costs if we put in some performance guarantees, like if he leaves in the next six years, he has to pay it all back or something of that nature? Is that something you're willing to entertain if Jay and I put together a proposal for you? Sure. Yeah. How much is how much is the course? You yeah. got to put together a proposal. Well, the total uh, would be somewhere around twenty four thousand um, dollars. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the town's not going to pay that. Um, you know, it's, so it's just a question of what the town would consider. You know, and it'd take them at least a couple of years to do it. So, what what the town would consider? Um, and well, here's, you know, here's a question though. If we give this to one union employee, wouldn't any union employee be able to ask for it? So we need to get this approved by the union as a, a, a variance to the contract. So you, you are correct in that. And the, the question becomes, 
is this a unique enough situation that we're willing to grant a one-time exemption for an employee? But are we also opening up the, are we opening up a, you know, an issue with regards to the fact that if we do this exemption for him and then we turn down another employee, are we going to have a problem? I mean, we, if we, if we went down this road, we would have to write a memorandum of understanding with the union specifically stating that this was not binding on future, you know, future employees or other employees. It. Make a proposal and bring it back to us so that we can understand okay. the details. But, but make sure that we also have that addressed to the proposal. Okay. All right. That's enough for me to go on. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Jay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jay. Uh, let's Thank go to item Thank five. you. Have a good night. All right, CJ. Are there any appointments, Eric? Uh, there are none. Okay, resignations, item six. Uh, there are none that I know of. I did hear, and this is rumor. Oh, uh, no rumors. Rumor. No, no, thank okay. you. All right, uh, item, item seven, a town administrator's report. Okay, so I'm going to hit the highlights of the stuff that's occurred since the last time. Uh, um, so we don't go through anything. So first of all, we have the RFQ for engineering services that's due back in a couple of days. How do you, how does the board of selectmen want to review the qualifications and pick a vendor? Um, are you willing to empower myself or pick a group to do follow-up interviews with a few firms and then pick? How do you want to deal with that? She doesn't have matching funds. Why is she even doing the grant? Okay. I'm sorry. No, that was that was uh, someone's mic was not muted. So okay. keep going, Eric. Uh, so that's the question. Are you comfortable would you be, with? Would you, would you be willing to accept maybe Ed Sirisley or somebody stepping in to help advise? Well, I was going to suggest Ed Sirisley and Jay Tuttle and have the three of us. Um, you know, and I was also going to consider consulting uh, with Jed because one of the functions is the town engineer is to do planning and wetlands review. And since Jed is on both, he would be a, he would be a twofer for that. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. Okay. So if we are going to do the community center, or not the community center, the parking for senior transportation, um, we are going to have to spend some money. Um, I've asked Rob Newton to give me back a cost estimate for whatever structural engineering and survey would be required to figure out how to put that building there. Do I have permission to execute that if I get back what's a reasonable estimate for that? Or do you want to see that again before I sign any contract with them? Define reasonable. I mean, I got to think the, you know, we're looking somewhere in the neighborhood of ten to $12,000 because we are gonna to need to survey it and we are gonna need some structural work. I, I don't see exceeding that. As long as it includes a survey of the lot, I'm fine with that. I would I'd say that's fair. Okay. You need Anyone a motion? Else? Where are you gonna pay for that out of? Yeah. Community I'm building. Pay for that out of the multi-use building fund. Um, next up, Public Works. We got the RFP back for the reclaim bid. Um, the costs were significantly higher than when we originally estimated it two years ago. And we had preliminary pricing then. The lowest bid we got for reclaim and repave of the section of Long Hill Road and Shoddy Mill Road was $378,000 by B&W, which was about 100,000 um, more than we initially estimated. So it's a huge jump, but given that the price of asphalt right now is running somewhere around 95 bucks a ton um, and the cost of fuel, that's probably the reality. Um, we are gonna be able to afford it. We're gonna have to shift around a few other things to make it happen. Um, Does that mean what project are we dropping to make that happen? So we're probably not gonna do any guardrails this year. Um, we're probably going to not do uh, basin cleaning, um, and we're probably not going to do any crack sealing, and that will do it. 
basin, is that something we want to go two years on? Uh, do we want to? No. Um, can we? Probably yes. We, we can ideal? do that. What? You, we can, Jane? We can do that. We can go another year. What's the effect of skipping a year? Um, Fuller basins. Fairly, neg fairly negligible, only because you know we're we're only using the salt, so it limits uh, it limits our silting into our basins. Did we see we, did did we see a significant reduction? Oh you yeah, know, most definitely. Okay. Because what I what, I, be, what I planned I on doing. What I planned on doing was scaling back on the catch basin cleaning as a whole anyway. We do the lake every year and the other parts of town every two. So would we still be doing the lake in this in this scenario or no? No, we'll be okay for this year. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next up, I want to put out the public works maintainer one position and start advertising that right now. Um, we're going to use essentially the same setup as last time for the interview panel, which was Jay Tuttle, myself, two public works supervisors from neighboring towns, brought basically the same question list as last time, um, basically the same job description for the maintainer one as the prior application. Jay has tweaked the job description a little bit, um, unless a board member wants to be in on that interview panel. And you're more than welcome to appoint one if you so desire. I would volunteer for that. Okay. Any objection, anyone? No, you're all good, Adrian. Thank you, sir. Okay. No, you're, the man, you're the man. <laughs> all right. Next up, purchase. You know how to operate the equipment. <laughs> Go. Next up, purchase of a skid steer. Um, so CIP has signed off on it and I got to look through the minutes, but I think Board of Finance signed off on it already once the budget was approved. Does the Board of Selectmen have any objection to us uh, signing the purchase order for the skid steer? How much are you paying for it? Uh, was it 70 something plus plus? Uh, one is 59,226 plus the add-ons of 15,792. So yeah, roughly 75. It's in the budget. Convention. Yeah. I mean, we're currently, we're currently, if you looked at, if you looked at Jay's notes for, for public works, he's been trying to schedule borrowing it from Coventry to accomplish what they've needed to accomplish on the short term. So, you know. We're certainly using one, so. Jay, while you're still on here, it's, uh, just a side note, your notes are great, but could you actually, when you're doing the notes, can you write next to each person what they actually did versus what the crew as a whole did? Uh, yeah, it'd take me some more time. Well, I mean, you know, I don't need you to break everything down, but you know, when looking through the notes, it's hard for me to tell. It almost reads like one person, you know, like if you read the note, it would, it, it, it's not clear as to who went where. No, you know? I, I understand. I mean, I can, I, I'll jockey it around. Well, I mean, what, what's to prevent you from asking those guys to, you know, give an end of work summary for themselves each day? What takes five minutes, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's just I got to come up with some more documentation to try to. Yes, it will, it will take some time. Well, I mean, we give them a sheet that can, says what what did you do today, you know, and they write down what they did. It's not a lot of. Yep. You don't have to do it. Let them do it. It takes five minutes. No, I understand. I'll. I'm, I'll I'm not asking I, you to do more or less, Jay. I'm asking you to do less. Actually, I'd like them to do it. Understood. Sometimes that's sometimes that's tough to do because. They're running around crazy too, getting stuff done. So, but uh, I will, uh, I'll work on that. Please. Okay. Okay, next up, connectivity grant project uh, is going fairly well. We're somewhere around 75% uh, complete. We did run into a little snafu 
um, because the state never told us until about a week ago that we needed to file some paperwork and that we needed to be spending six and a half percent of the funds on a woman owned or minority owned contractor. However, we weren't under budget at the project as overall as a project. We're going to be able to accomplish that. I had a meeting with the contractor on Friday um, when we kind of figured out a game plan forward. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with Christine Randazzo to do a landscape design because we have enough money to do a reasonable design. Um, Jay has asked that we consider you know, some screening elements to hide the tanks, the, the big tank at Public Works because that's kind of ugly for the road. Um, and we're also looking at a couple other small add-ons. So we're gonna accomplish uh, what we need to do and we're gonna be legally compliant with the state. It is a little more work on my part and the contractor's part, but we're under budget. So we're gonna end up fine uh, on the project and we'll be able to get some things incorporated into the project that we didn't originally know we had the money to do. How, so, how about handicapped access at the soccer field? Oh. Uh, I don't know whether I can make that part of the grant. I'll consider that though. That's a really good thought. I just got to see whether that'll work or whether that's because that's really not that's really past the area of construction for the project. When, when you make the print, don't add the river. <laughs> the sidewalk is supposed to get down there, so it's kind of hard to leave the river out. Um, let's talk about that tomorrow. If, if I can squeeze it into the grant, I will, Scott. Okay, so that's what I got for that. I did get a note from uh, Martin Heft, the undersecretary, that we should be getting our second allotment for the American Recovery Act funding, um, which should be the same amount we got the first time, which is $478,848. And we should get that relatively soon. But the state doesn't tell you when relatively soon is. Uh, Da, 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 da. Um, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about from the administrator's report. I will have some more stuff when we get to the electric car charger, but that's later in the agenda. Okay. Anybody have any questions for the town administrator? Adrian? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to item eight. We're going to get through this uh, old business uh, item 8A, renewal of tax payment for Hot River Homes in the softball field renewal. Uh, so you've signed and agreed to the tax abatement. As far as the softball renewal is, I put in the packet a copy signed by myself and Hop River Homes. It is not yet signed by uh, whatever the state aid agency that they USDA. Spent, it, USDA. Um, I faxed it to them, got it, got it there for their signature, but we just, I haven't heard squat from them. But as far as I'm concerned, we have a copy signed by us and the owner of the property. So I'm not too concerned with that. That's all I have for that. I'm good. 8B Community Center RFP for design build. I'm uh, working on, I'm working on it. It's currently out to a a couple of people for consult to see if it meets what they would bid against or if I need to make some modifications to include things I don't currently have in it, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, HC, authorized UConn Energy Benchmarking Study. We provided them with all the information they require except for one thing which I'm still trying to get from the school, um, but I'm working on that. Um, we've got them 95% of the way uh, complete with what they need for that. Okay. Uh, 8D, uh, Tom personnel policy, part-time employee status, return to work after injury, longevity payments, senior transportation drivers. Uh, that's a holdover from the last time. I'm just still waiting for you all to review the red line copy that I gave you and give me comments back if you so desire. Okay, we'll have to do that. Uh, 8E, finance department office structure. Now let, let's back up where, I mean, I know you're saying you'd like to do that, but that's been out there for a while. Does anybody have any issues with it so we can move forward? 
I don't have any issues with it. I don't remember reading it, though. I'll be honest. That's why I was going to go back and read it. Okay. Eric, um, my, you know, looking at it, I just had a, I had a couple questions, but I'll address them with you directly offline. Um, but where are we at as far as, it looks like you've sent out and got some some stuff back from them. Is that correct? Uh, are we talking about the town's personnel policy or are we talking about the union contract? Union contract. Union contract, we should probably discuss in executive session. Okay. So uh, 8E, Finance Department Office Structure. So I sent you a note on where we were updated uh, as of, I don't know, yesterday? I Friday, think I sent it out today Friday. or yesterday. Did I send it out Friday? Yeah, you, you updated, yep. Yeah, so do you have questions for me, Jeff? I, I mean, I'm working on the information that Marina sent me. You know, trying that's to be that's probably a separate conversation. Fine, let's go. Um, we're just going to move on from that because that's a huge issue. Eight and board clerk employment. So we have the job application out there for the board clerk. So far, we haven't really gotten a ton of response back for it, but it's still open. Um, so that's hopefully we'll get one. Uh, at some point. Do we have something in the River East or the JI? Uh, we did advertise in the River East and on the town website, and okay. I don't remember exactly where else. Okay. Should we just check and make sure it's on Indeed or something too? You want that on Indeed also? Makes sense. Okay. Okay, 8G, Senior Transportation Vehicle Parking. We spent an hour on that. We skipped that one over um, because we still have parking for it. 9A, <laughs> Fiscal Year 2022-2023, Proposed Town Budget. Uh, the budget passed. The Board of Finance has set a mill rate, so no action is needed on that. What's the current mill rate going to be? Uh. You had to ask me that. It's 31 something, but it, I can't tell you off the top of my head. If you give me a couple minutes, I could give you the exact number. Okay. Just curious. We can, we can wait. I thought I saw it. So, 9F, the car charging installation at Town Hall, the Eversource program. So, I put a motion in your packet. Um, so, this was something that has been on my plate for a while and I just hadn't had time to address. So I spent the time to go through the Eversource program um, and sat down with Rick at Lenco um, and then talked to some of the other surrounding towns that had put in chargers. Um, based on that, I suggest we use the uh, EVSD charger. It's a company that's headquartered in Connecticut. They appear to make very good products. Um, what I would like to do is apply for the grant through Eversource. Um, so what we have to pay for is half the cost of the chargers themselves and Eversource picks up the cost of the installation. So, so we need the, 5k. Where are you going to get the money from? So I'm going to take it out of the building maintenance fund. Okay. And, and is that going to interfere? I'm trying to understand location where, where, the, where this is going to end up. Is this going to interfere or be an issue with any of the the current community center plans or any of that stuff? No. no, what I'm intending to do is put it on the opposite side of town hall. So between the town hall and the fire department and the two spaces that are closest to the front door of the town hall. Okay. And then I'm right. also gonna future proof. So if we have to, at some point, the wiring will all be in place so we could add two more chargers later. All right. If it turns out we actually needed them. A motion to authorize the town administrator to submit an Eversource application for a grant to cover the cost of the installation of two electric chargers, EVSE 3704 pole mounted level two chargers, with credit card station and RFIP reader at the Andover Town Hall. Total estimate cost of the project is $24,132. Town's cost about $5,000. Chargers to be located southwest side of the building, southwest side of the building, town hall of the town hall building. The project will not be started until Eversource issues the official incentive reservation determination letter. 
Second. Go ahead. Go ahead, King. Uh, Paula gets it. Discussion, I guess. I'll get, sure. it. I'll get it. Just one question, Eric. Have you let the library know about this program too? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. I don't know if a level two charger would work all that well over there, though. Well, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there because you know we're kind of up to beaten path, and they're being right off of Route Six, either there or the the museum. Just a thought. Yep. That is a thought. Do they have the power up there? They're right by six. They can get it. Yeah, I mean, it would be possible to get it. it it's basically two chargers is a 100 amp load. So you have to size it for a 100 amp load. Would it make sense to put it down at the ball field? So maybe you could sit there and get the power down there so you could actually do something in the future like lights. You could put that in one of your things you wrote. Well, I think the point the power, is there is a 200 amp service at the ball field. So mm -hmm. it would be possible to put one in at the ball field. Um, to me, what makes it ideal putting it at the town hall is if the town does go buy an electric vehicle. <laughs> transportation it's an easy place to plug it in this goes back to his electric vehicle conversation about having smaller vehicles for senior transport and we don't have to worry about them stealing the catalytic converter this way it's electric i just don't know how much it's going to get used that's all i know the one in hebron doesn't get used hardly at all i never well, seen anybody but we're either going to put it in now or we're going to put it in when we get the electric vehicle. We have to do one or the other, right? Yep. I just didn't know if it was uh, worth it to explore other areas of town as well. So that's so that was my question. Well, I, I think his point about putting a town hall and what we, back when we discussed the electric vehicle was that we needed a charger at town hall in order to charge that vehicle. Correct. But I didn't know, and I didn't know if the library knew about it, if they wanted to put one there, they're, if they're, location as well that's well that's a, but that's a separate let's deal yeah, with I just this didn't know, I just, but I just didn't know if we could bundle them all together that's all that's, that's, that was my question oh that I don't know is there any incentive to that Eric well Maybe no because we pretty one. much maxed out our maximum grant amount was $20,000 and this is going to be pretty much maxed that out okay you that answered my question then not that we couldn't put a second grant in as soon as we got the first one for the library we might be able to do that if, if that's something you want to pursue. I'm just saying, if we make them idea. off, they want to chase it. Well, yeah, let's let them know. And, and once we get this one done, if Eric can put in a second one, he's saying maybe, then let's find out. Okay. Let's vote on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, five, nothing. All right. That is actually all for new business. So we're gonna move on to the approval of the minute meetings, the meeting minutes from Monday, April 11th and Monday, May 16th. Somebody wanna make a motion to approve the motion, the meeting. I'll minutes. make a motion to approve the April 11th, 2022 regular meeting minutes and the May 16th, 2022 regular meeting minutes. Seconded. Okay, Adrian seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five, nothing. We'll move on. Um, there was a significant uh, item 11 is the finance department report. Um, there's a significant amount of information in these packages related to this. So the budget revenue summary, the town budget summary, the town aid road update, town cash. Report, over Can I ask a question that I, I noticed in there? Yeah. We're are we paying? It looks like there's multiple transactions on one check, and this happens more than one time. Whether it's so, for instance, we're paying the excavating company, there's like five separate numbers, but they all have the same PO and the same check number, but there's five deductions listed. And so, we, we typically pay. For a number of our vendors, like the utility company, you know, we send them one check, even though 
We are subsequently billing five departments within the town against that bill. Um, so we combine bills to the same vendor regularly. Okay, so oh, so okay, let's go back and state. But they were all but they were all public public works. It looks like they're on the public works because they came out of Town Aid Road. Right. So if it's to the same vendor, like for instance, if we're buying asphalt and we got ten tickets for asphalt, we're not sending them ten checks. We're sending them one check for the materials we're buying from that vendor. Oh, they're giving us ten separate invoices. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. It's like it's like EverSource. You'll get, well, you'll have ten bills the town receives. Oh, I, I I just haven't seen that with material suppliers. Like when we get aggregate or bulk deliveries, I mean they'll put they'll they'll combine thirty of them into one payment. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to give me thirty separate tickets if we're doing a site project. So. I just wasn't aware that that was happening. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have any qu other questions on the finance department reports? I mean, we are going. Anyway, anybody else? Okay, so Eric wrote to us on item 12, the budget, the appropriation transfers and over expenditure requests. Anybody have any questions related to those items? No, he explained what happened or what's happening, I should say. Okay, tax collector's report. Any questions related to that and the collections for the month of May? Actually, was that report even May? I looked at that. I wasn't sure if it was May or April. It had to be May. It was May. Okay. Um, assessor's report. Was so assessor's I'm going to suggest we don't keep the assessor's report a standalone report. We just wrap it into department reports in the future. Sure. I agree with that. I think we're pretty much done with reval services. So there's no reason to keep a standalone reval services line item unless you want he still needs to include this small report with the number of activities he has for act monthly activities well yeah i mean we'll still we'll just put it in as one of the department reports and just have assessors report as part of a regular department instead of giving them their very own number that sounds okay. like a good streamline and is it so difficult to get the may report for our june meeting Uh, it's a question. Okay, let's keep going. Um, there was. Are we okay with what Eric suggested? You didn't give a. Yes, I have no problem with that. Thank you. Okay, does anybody have any questions on the other reports that were included? I do not. Okay, then we move past that. Eric, any other correspondence? Uh, nope. Okay. Public speak, item 17. Let's move through our list. Okay, sorry. Karen Mador, public speak. You're good? Wave you off. Next. Joanne Eber. Okay. We'll come back to you, Joanne. Ann Kermay. Nothing tonight, thanks. Okay. Diane Choquette. Nothing. I'm all set. Thanks. All right. Leanne Hutchinson. I skipped Carol. I know I did. No, Carol Lee. All set. Thank you. President. Thank you. Uh, phone number ending in 5579. Hi, that's me, Marina. I, I couldn't unmute myself quick enough in the finance department section. I just have one question to circle back on the longevity payment only because I have one payroll and one AP batch left for the year. So I'm just trying to look at it from like a budget standpoint for the end of the year. I don't know what we want to do about that payment. I thought we, we agreed to it in our last meeting. We authorized it. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. It should have been in the previous minutes, I think. Okay. I'll go back and reread them. 
Thank you. Yep, thanks. Right. And then we have, an, we have a phone number ending in two, three, four, five. That's Dennis. That's me, uh, Dennis. Dennis, the attorney. I do have a question. Sure. Um, I, I believe Adrian brought up the idea of having a meeting with the um, Charter Revision Commission for regarding the Charter Revision. I did. And, and I, think, I don't think anybody gave a date for that meeting. Yes, right after our, right after our meeting, right after our public hearing. 27th. Uh, well, I'm not sure that would be uh, the right time to have it. Because? I don't think that, well, because, uh, you, you know, I could see you having it if you first had a meeting of the, uh, a meeting of the, of the, of the board. We are. Because the results of the, uh, results of the uh, public hearing, and if you say, approved or didn't approve the entire package in a very brief meeting, probably, you could then meet with the Charter Revision Commission that same night and have a trio of proceedings, one right after the other. Yeah, that's what we're going to do, Jim. That's what we already okay. approved. Okay, so you're going to have a board, you'll have to notice a public hearing, and that's got to be have a public hearing, and then if we feel that we need to have discussion with the Charter Commission, we will we'll then go, we'll make a decision at that point, and and move into a charter commission meeting. Okay, so your pu your public hearing will be followed by a board of selectment meeting, and that would have to be noticed because that's a meeting. That's not a public hearing. Okay. So your public hearing, then your board of selectment meeting, and then if needed, your meeting with the charter commission. Thank you for the I clarification. Like okay, I hung around just for this. You're awesome. Right. Good luck, well, buddy. It's always a good it's always a good time. All right. Did I miss anyone? Yeah, I want to say something for the 175th committee. Um, Catherine has jumped is this, off. Is this public comment? Yes. yes. This is this is public comment for. Yeah, you have one minute. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I would also like to say that the 175th committee they are collecting recipes for a recipe book that they will be selling. So please visit their um, Facebook page. They're also printed. Um, Paula, Adrian. none of us know how to cook. Adrian, stop interrupting me, okay? At the library and at the town hall, there are printed pieces of paper that you can submit your recipe to. And um, please consider sending in a recipe. Please consider donating. There is a link on the support network and on the town um, website along with the town Facebook page. This is gonna be a great community event. This is our celebration for our town, 175 years. So donate, 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 donate. Come on, people. I'm talking to everybody in this town. Thank you. Now, what do you want to say, Adrian? No, that's it. I, I, I just picturing you with pom-poms at this point. I love it. Yes. Donate, donate, donate. I was not a cheerleader. I was a soccer player, but there we go. Everybody go to the page and donate, please. So did you did you donate a recipe? I am writing one tomorrow and I also donated to the committee for the celebration. So Adrian, I'm challenging you tonight publicly. Please send in your favorite recipe because I know you are a great cook and also please consider donating to this great cause. I think we should have a bake sale. Um, why don't you join the committee meeting and suggest that to them? I'll work on yeah, that. Excellent. You two can bicker later. Let's, uh, let's go. Uh, oh, Joanne said she didn't hear her name. You said you'd circle back. She uh, said that in, in the chat. Joanne Ebert. Hi, sorry if I missed it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention one thing and it sounds like you're all going in that direction, um, that it would be. I think it would be opening a can of, for, of worms with that request to fund college, you know, or for one employee speaking from experience. So I had put in the chat earlier, which I know isn't really always a good thing, but usually those kind of things are negotiated through unions because what's good for one is good for everyone. And, um, you know, that is a big financial price to pay too. So I'm sure you'll think long and hard, but it, it definitely shouldn't just be offered to one person, in my opinion, and it, it should be, you know, presented as a long-range plan, 
it's another big financial hit for the town if it is offered. That's all. Thank you for considering that part. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, now, who has control of the meeting? Yeah, I do. Paul, Paul I'll stop reading your text. So we need going to make a motion to go into executive session to discuss. Yes, I know. We, we have to say goodbye to everyone else who's joined us and for our meeting. Thank you very much. Bye. All right. Still have to make the motion. Hi, everyone. Let's make the motion. I make, make a, a motion, motion to go into executive oh. session at 9.45 p.m. I am not seconding that. I'll second it, Paula. All right. All those in favor, aye. Thank you. Aye.